Hello, everybody. It's Monday. It's the start of a brand new week. How you doing? I hope you're doing pretty all right, because I know I am. A little tired today, struggling to, to kind of get through. Uh, but having some weird, like, anxiety over nothing. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's been weird. It's, it's, it's like excited anxiety, not like dreadful. Um, I don't know. I think I like... It, it seems to happen every time I think about doing this. This stream. Uh, and I think that's interesting. <laughs> it's a little annoying. It's I, I feel like I'm a little overhyped, but yeah, we'll get through it. It'll, it'll even out eventually, I assume. But yeah, so here we are. Uh, diving right back into Quantum Break. Uh, if you missed this last time, uh, we'll have the episode up on our YouTube channel. The should still be uh, in the videos here on Twitch. But uh, long and short of it, time is all fucky-wucky thanks to a time machine experiment gone horribly wrong. And our main character, Jack Joyce, he has the power to manipulate time as does the villain. You can see his blurry face there. Quantum break. Junction. Business or personal? The future used to be so clear when I was reliving the past. Once I this caught up Paul to the Serene. moment I had left, that ended. All I've had to go on since then are the plan and the visions. I knew Jack That's would come to me. Mr. Hatch. I'd seen that. But I didn't know why, exactly. Or how it would end. There is. You were right. My visions of the future aren't always clear, but they don't lie. Speaking of lies, Joyce is saying he's discovered his brother's time machine. We've spent 17 years looking for it, and he finds it in less than a day? It does sound unlikely. Still, we know it's out there somewhere. We don't know what his brother managed to tell him. If he really has located the machine, why would he come here and tell you? Smart Money says he's trying to play you. Maybe, but the machine is out there. It's in our interest to find out where. And if Jack knows, I have to talk to him. Quantum Break was Remedy's attempt to... Well, I should say Remedy the and Joyce Microsoft's attempt the to... to that question. William's attitude and jump into like a prestige television and mix it with Is video that games. Angry young man going to cooperate any more than his brother did. You remember Jack as a close friend, but the clouds your judgment. Don't make this personal. It's not. But don't forget why we're here tonight. After what happened, our people need reassurance that we're in control. You're the man who could win them over. Let Is me handle control? choice, so you can concentrate on your speech. I know what's at stake here, Martin. What are these doing here? We should be set up by now. It's all on schedule. You're micromanaging again. So currently I'm playing as Paul Serene, the main Don't villain. Twitch. Because he makes big decisions that affect the story. Mr. Joyce is waiting for us down below. I'm looking around Hatch. And here you are. I had to see the lifestyles of the sick and traitorous up close and personal. And it was such a nice invitation. Honey, wanna do Keep it cool, this ice man. Keep it cool. Uh oh, time to choose. I could still try to reach Jack and make him see reason. Or I could let Hatch deal with him so nothing would distract me from leading Monarch. Let's see what happens if we get personal. I've been to the past. I've tried to change things. Answer me this question, Will. I once trusted Jack more than anybody. It was my only chance to make him understand the truth. The fuck do you mean nobody got a look at the shooter? But without me there to give the speech, my empire would start to crumble like a house of cards. Let's see what happens if we choose business. I believe that with hope comes miscalculation. 
calculation, and as you and I are well aware, Mr. Joyce, with miscalculation can often come a catastrophe. And that leaves me with you, Mr. Joyce. But my old friend Ominous. would be a lost cause, dead and buried along with the rest of my past. Tonight is a celebration, a celebration in face of darkness. Tonight we celebrate because I promise to you Spock that Spock we are prepared. Shit. Monarch would grow stronger with my presence. The plan would go forward as intended. The plan being something called the lifeboat protocol in the face of a complete temporal shutdown. Chat, if you are there, which, which choice, personal or business? Our fate is in your hands. Looks like we are on our own today. No big deal. This is very early in the stream, so just start one of these. What was that? Business. business? All right, my husband yelled business. Caitlin, would you? Caitlin, you just got called out as uh, choosing business. So we're putting this on you again. <laughs> we didn't come this far to get derailed now. You talk to him, find out what he knows, then get rid of him. They're all our money bags. I know you want to make this all about you and me, Jack. But that's far away in the past now. And I have a speech to prepare for. I've seen where this leads. I've been to the end of time, and I've escaped it. All the way to 1999, when it all started. I've tried to change things, but by trying, I only made them happen in the first place. We cannot escape our fate. The community agreed. 43% went business. Interesting. That's a little, uh... A little different. So now here we do the prestige television show episode. Live action. Some of the decisions I've made throughout the game affects what happens here. Let's get clear on something. This is still my ship. You're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking clearly. I like that they make uh, Martin and Palsarine the same height in game when Lance Reddick is like a thousand feet tall. Just lost communication with Jack that was, uh, that was Fine. Caitlin's fault right there that she had Step to die. Away. Right now! Liam, this isn't what it looks like. No. No! He's gone! We need all points converged on Liam Burke. He's armed and dangerous. back and watch The Prisoner. I've never managed to watch that all the way through. It's a good show, though. Something new. You should enjoy yourself tonight. You work too much as it is. 
These treatments are for his uh, time sickness. They're increasing in frequency and duration. Dissipate. Also, we're getting hit with the fail. Them fall allergies. I mean, yeah. It's not wrong. Pulsarine sleep apnea machine. I need to prepare for my speech. Sophia, you shouldn't worry so much. Point of clarification: This is Sophia uh, Amaral, I believe her last name is. They're in Dr. Kim's lab. Dr. Kim is dead. But that happened well before the start of the story, so that's not even something we would have seen. That's just something I've read about. You haven't touched your drink. I am just not. I'm not really into drinking a lot, I guess. Oh. Rough day? Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Like what? I have things happen in my day. I do. Uh -huh. We read some uh, emails last time that told us this lady whose name escapes me, as most names do, is actually trying to pump this guy, Charlie, for information. And he's a dope. Fiona! The scene stand, CPAP stands for Cronaut. Excellent. Traitor. Is that what all that commotion was about? Yeah. That was me. Who was it? I mean, hmm? Who was it? <laughs> Who's the... Who, who was it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't... I can't, uh... What? I am not at liberty to discuss this. Well, you just brought it up. It's like, uh, well, monarch drama. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I guess, I guess I'm just gonna have to leave you hanging on that one. For real. This time. Well, I just thought maybe you'd wanna share it with me. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna use the restroom, so... You hang in here, for real. Okay. Go mingle. Yeah. Drink okay. a little. Okay. All right. Hey, it's us. Thanks for the gun. Dr. Ramro? Martin? I need your help. He listens to you. Paul. Is that so? I think we're in trouble, and he doesn't see it. He refuses to. I can't imagine why. I know you and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but I know you care about Monarch. You care about what happens. And if we are reaching zero stage, something has to be done. Then what is it we could do? You know what we could do. Truth is, Sophia, it's not really a matter of whether or not Paul would listen to me. It's that I won't listen to you. I find your approach to matters rather counterproductive, filling Paul's head with your constant alarmism, distracting him with petty doomsday scenarios. I mean, if I'm being honest. Petty doomsday. I rule it's a good that band name. gave you a modicum of function in this company. As you said, I care about Monarch. What is it that you're so threatened by, Martin? Lady, do I look threatened? 
Do I look threatened to oh. you? Alright, well. Is Paul the best 3D model to actor on? conversion? There's nothing. Sorry, other way around. We Obviously, then have a make the time. actors based on the 3D models. You should prepare for your speech. Yeah. We, we were just uh, making out. Yes, making out. Yeah, look, he's like a full foot taller than Paul Serene. Okay, that's exaggerating, but like six inches at least. <laughs> I just don't know why they felt the need to try and, like, ratchet him down a few inches in-game. Especially since they very clearly show that this real actor is taller. Ah. Uh, silly. Hey, you're Crocker, right? Hey, Crocker! Betty Crocker! Crocker! I really need to take a shit. Don't call me on, that! Croc Crocker! Crocker! Come on, Crocker! Oh, hell yeah! I want that tray to come my way. <laughs> We're in a party! Where? The woman with the necklace. Mm. My money is on that. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty good choice, yeah. but... I'm gonna have to go with Ryan Gosling down there talking with George Clooney. Wearing his nice cufflinks. Chatting about stocks. Yeah. Stacks. Richard, where the hell have you been? Didn't have my invitation. Oh my god, you're always losing things. I'm not losing anything. Ooh. Drama. Yeah. Wow. Uh oh. She's going for it. No. Bam. No. Told ya. Oh. Why am I losing you so bad? I don't think I can drink. drink. I don't think no, I can. No, rules are rules. Rules are rules. Rules are fucking rules. You know me not a Rules are fucking rules. Wow, I actually hate all of this. You can do it, my man. Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> God, I hate you. Oh, we all hate you, Charlie. Charlie, you are the worst. Thank you. I just wish I wasn't losing so bad. Do you want to go for a walk? Yeah. Okay. I, I said right. a walk. <laughs> Don't get any ideas. I'm taking mine too. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey buddy. Crocker. Buddy Crocker. Crocker. Burke. Buddy Crocker. Crocker. Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Burke. Hey, listen, if I have to come in there, you're gonna fucking regret it. Listen, this is just a big misfucking understanding. I'm gonna be out tomorrow. Misfucking understanding. Oh, wouldn't a good word for you? I will help you climb this ladder. All I'm asking is please let me take a fucking shit. Go to the back wall. Has anyone ever said a fucking Thank shit? You so much. Oh man. Thank you. Shut Good. up. Back up slowly. Yeah. Ah, cheer attack. And you're fired. That's okay though, the apocalypse is here. We'll be fine. Brought to you by Microsoft Phones. Nobody has one. It it really is interesting to me how they tried to Say no mind that we follow the like T V model. <laughs> Excited about going in the first I, place. Okay, I what'd know. you get? It, I think, the, the, it, like it, uh, with good and bad though, right? Like the, the marketing is stuff is very clear. Oh, hey, yeah. So oh, I touched that and it disappeared, and now yeah, it's here. That's exactly what it looks and like. And that's that's we, my gameplay hey, affecting the live action here? story. Yeah, I'm sure. And look, it's a cheap trick, okay. but it is fun. Right. I don't know. The first time I saw that, I was like, 
Okay. So what would you have been doing tonight if we didn't go? What? Silly. If I gone to the party with you? Yeah. Well, I would have canceled all my other really important plans. Ah. But it's fun, you know. It's an experiment. It's, they were trying stuff, and I appreciate that. Well, no, I mean, I, I, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I like being wired in. Yeah. Makes me feel connected. You work all the time. In fact, you're there most of the time. I'm there. So, do you think you work too much? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm there. I guess. Yeah. Love work. Hold oh, me right shit. there! Shit. <laughs> you little fuck! Hey, can I walk? All you had to do was let me in that perimeter lab. You turned on Monarch. What was I supposed to do? You have no idea what's going on, do you? I need to get in that lab. There's something in there that I need. The lifeboat protocol. You work with Beth Wilder. I've seen you before. You know her? She's the reason I'm here. Ah! Shot through the heart! Yeah, you can see the moment his heart breaks in two. It's great. Fucking twerp. If you weren't here for episode one, uh, this sounds cruel and unusual, but I promise you. That gun still necessary? He's a twerp. Yeah. He's a, he's a little jerk. Just a snotty little jerk. Very he doesn't have a heart, though. I mean, he does. And that's why it's fun watching it break in half. That's the thing. Like we can, we we can't villainize people to the to the point where we dehumanize them because then you miss the part where it's fun watching their little asses right get handed to them. My breathing is coming through occasionally. Try moving the mic away. Is it my breathing or is it the fan? But I will move the oh, mic right. a bit. I got it, guys. I got it. My treat. You guys can't do this. It's a special talent I have. Glad it's so celebrated. <laughs> I mean, look, Charlie's a twerp, but th I actually do like just a little bit feel bad for him in this story is because he is completely clueless to what's going on, and he is just getting played, and then he gets put in a fucking rough spot. Like, yeah, he is a he is a jerk. That's ominous. I love that. He's a jerk, but you know, so that? am I. You know, his whole thing about like, oh, I just, it's how I feel connected being like wired in. It's like, yeah, I understand that shit. That's, I get it. I don't connect with people in person very well. I mean, again, you got uh, first episode, he's a complete asshole to people for no reason, but. What the fuck is that? Oh no! Did that say subject Kim Henry? Thanks, Microsoft Windows Photo App. I know what that looks like from the porn. Chrono disrupted life form. Extremely hostile. Only ever heard of him. Also pictured. <laughs> After dealing with Zoom meetings. Yeah. It's a whiteboard, Stop Charlie. Again. <gasps> He's not dead. He's extremely not dead. Death would be a blessing. He's been time fucked. Anyway. Do you know who I am? I will shit in places that will leave My your mind wandering. Okay. Wait, you guys are married? It means we're married. Oftentimes it's called homosexuality. Or arbitrary. Say so you're his assistant. God, I'm so, so fucking bummed he passed away. Dude, he's so good. 
He's so good in everything, and he's so funny, and I love him. Anyway. No, I can sit here and offer you my condolences from my brother, and uh, you can tell me to fuck off. I can tell you Paul doesn't want you to suffer the same fate, and you can tell me to fuck off. I was in the Paul, wire, Iceman. I could point out that there's a difference between Paul and myself. See, I don't know why it's funny to me to point out like people's actors are other characters. That makes me laugh. More realistic approach. It makes me ha 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 ha. I believe that with hope comes miscalculation, and as you and I are well aware, Mr. George, with miscalculation can often come catastrophe. Paul's a very dangerous man, practically a zealot, and things will only get worse if he continues unchecked. And that leaves me with you, Mr. Joyce. You're like a sassy little firecracker. Maybe you and I can find some common ground. You see, I'm something of a money man, and Paul Serene, well, he's bad for money. Oops, that's not a blinking light. Do the math. Do the math. It's obviously a trap, but we're taking it! Let's go, Gene. Sure, I was trying. I stopped myself because, like, is that denim? Who was is it? Is that a denim shirt? It looks like a denim. Shirt. He was my mentor. Denim on denim. From uh, college and then here to Monarch. I was in a bad place. Hot denim on denim there. action. Got it. Sort of. I mean, it's, it's a ghost file. It's from Nana Mass Deletion, somebody was here. We got the um, Cronin Field Regulator. Wait, hold on. Holy shit, this is Dr. Amaral's report. What is it? The stutters, they're, they're increasing in frequency. What's a stutter? The more frequent the stutters, the more indicative of a fracture. Okay, and what's a fracture? Of time. Boy, we are really behind. Zero state, it stops, and it doesn't start back up. And the lipo protocol could save us. I have no idea. But the, the chronon field regulator, it is the core of Monarch's time tech. Everything is based upon it. And it, it has something to do with the lifeboat. Oops. We have to go. Wait. No, 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 no. This way, this way. Turn. No, 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 The lab is stutter proof. Stay here. Stutter, where are you going? There are Kronon harnesses up here. We need them. So Liam Burke is new to identifying all of this. Fiona's been fighting this fight for a little while. And I really like the time stutter effect. Sword. Holy crap. So those goofy looking devices they're wearing, uh, protect them from the time stops. Allow them to remain active at time stops. Stutters. Oh, Action! Shit. I would love to know how much, like, the game's visual effects and the show's visual effects fed into each other. Uh, that'd be extremely fascinating.
see, still a bit of a weasel, but can't entirely be upset with him. He was being held at gunpoint. Stutter stop. Drama. All very dramatic. The end of episode two. Wanna break? The wine and cheese crowd. Security was tight at the Monarch Gala. You took quite a risk walking in. Clarissa Gawa is game. talking we to Jack at Dr. some point after the events of this inside. game, and they're recounting Beth the events. Wilder. You were quick to trust her. We had common interests. Is that all you had? It's all we needed. Thanks for showing up. Here, yeah, I thought this was going to be a rescue. Right, there's a story here. You know a guy called Hatch? Serene's right-hand man. He was here. He gave me this big speech about how he wants to take down Paul. I hope you said no. I didn't trust him for a second. He set me loose anyways, told me to wait for an opening. I just gave you one. Appreciate it. The actress for Beth Wilder is the main character of Control, as I mentioned What's last week. Like out there? I apologize when I repeat myself, but... I like to repeat myself. You're secure. Everyone's <laughs> concentrating on the party. So far, your crazy plan's working. I do and love this Dr. structure. Emerald. Definitely I doesn't look like an her. evil James Bond lair. She's either at the party or at her office at the R&D facility here on the island. I'll yes, of course it does, but that's why I love it. So. So you're gonna sip champagne while I break into a high security installation. It's like you got this all figured out. I'll save you a cocktail, weenie. Oh well, in that case. Time vision. My cover isn't going to survive the night, but it'll last a little longer, so you can't walk out the front door with me. This is the quickest way to the R&D facility. I disabled the security at the back door, but there'll be guards. Contact me when you're clear. And Jack, you know what's at stake here. This can't be about revenge. I'm not here for Paul. You found that loud? Fan has been solved. So hopefully no more random <sighs> Unless it's me doing it. Hey! He's escaping! Jesus, that escape lasts all of two seconds. Time rush! Keep holding it, keep holding it. Wow, bullet cool. Anyway. Melee takedown! Superman! Punch! Acknowledge me! Damn. That will hurt in the morning. Ooh, technical SMG. Hell yeah. My powers were growing. I was My powers were growing. Better. That felt good. Oh no, he's succumbing to his own hubris. Yeah. Oh. Who the hell designs these doors? Okay, I'm gonna have to move. Uh, gotta go fast. Very sci-fi and very monarch. Something tells me it wasn't commissioned by them, though. Someone named Toto. A lighthouse because there's always a lighthouse. Hey Beth, I'm clear. What's next? I see a radar tower up ahead soon. Let me know when you get inside. All right. Time run. 
rolling around at the speed of sound. Oh, you could have warned me about that one, Beth. Oh, stop, turn it off. There we go. <clears throat> okay, see. how am I getting to that radar tower? Staircase. Oh. Cool guys, don't look at time bubbles. Yep. Let's try this again. Uh, figure out my path there. So this is a dead end. Can I stand on top of it? it Seem to go away. Maybe I just gotta be in the right spot. of time. Uh, like I said, reasons I love this game. These powers are actually very fun to use. Like, I could use another one of these games where they really refine a lot of these mechanics. But now we've got a shitload more. Oops. Disappear. Well, at least we got it under control now. There they are. Acknowledge me! Acknowledge me! Time felt broken here. Yes, the good one. Go Island Sign! Report Coastal Defenses! Long story short, Naval Base. There's a cannon. Wait, tactical SMG? Switch for tactical. The whole cannon felt unsafe. Oh no, in that's time. the actual SMG. I have the tactical SMG. Uh, let's see. Whole island felt. Ah. So. Hit him with one of these. The timeline of the old cannon felt loose. I could shift it around. Smart place to aim the cannon, guys. I've been thinking. Monarch projections say these stutters are getting more frequent. If one hits while we're grabbing Dr. Amaral... You'll be frozen. Yeah, I know. It's a risk. Monarch specialist troopers have the stutterproof gear. I bet Dr. Amaral would have that in her office, too. I'll keep an eye out. Let's see if I grab it for you. I'm glad none of them heard me rampantly shooting my gun. Alright, I remember this sequence is a bit of a pain. Yeah. I'm not easy, but it will see. Oh, cool. It didn't go off for some reason. Ah. They got turdy turrets. Everybody go. Superman! Stop right up might be a bit more prudent here. Fly like a Superman! And stomp, apparently. Out of time, out of time. Oh, that's a sniper, that's not another turret. I saw this guy over here. Shpow! I am your time bullshit. Who's that? Sick of your shit, sniper boy. Find myself a little time bubble. Get a look. There's a guy. I 
Prepare. There we go. That's all. Jack, I've disabled security and unlocked the gates leading to the tower. Let me know when you get there. Carbine rifle. Thanks, Beth. Beth, I'm at the radar tower. Where's the lab? Below your feet. It's all top secret. The elevator inside will take you down. Good evening, folks. This oh, is seriously? <laughs> what is this, a Bond villain layer? <laughs> you have no idea. Just don't fall into the shark tank. I already made that joke. Come on, guys. Stealing my material. Oh, fuck. I fuck? Thank you, and welcome. Tonight marks a momentous occasion. For years, we have been building towards this day. Years of planning, developing, training. For me personally, this marks the end stuff. of a 17 year it, journey, and today we emerge it. from the shadows. We do so accepting great responsibility. I present to you the CFR. The solution. The Cronon Field Regulator. This device has been at the heart of our Cronon research Where the graphic since designer was for all their logos and shit. Very good. It's so good much more job. than just that. This device will be our salvation, and as promised, it is ready. To some of you, this means nothing. To others, everything. Rest assured, you will all know when the time is right. We are entering a volatile age. Great danger is coming our way. It cannot be prevented. But we can be protected. And so tonight is a celebration. A celebration in the face of darkness. We celebrate but For some of you, this means nothing. For others, everything. Rest assured, you will all know when the time is right. We are entering a volatile age. Great danger is coming our way. It cannot be prevented. But we can be protected. And so tonight is a celebration. A celebration in face of darkness. Tonight we celebrate because I promise to you that we are prepared. We are prepared for what comes next. We are prepared to do what is necessary. We are prepared necessary. to survive. Thank you. Is this guy a native English speaker? Look at him. Not a care in the world. Jack, if that's really what you think, you're not paying attention to the story, buddy. But <laughs> I get it. You're mad. He, he kind of accidentally totally killed your brother. I get it. Beth, I'm about to take the elevator. See Paul still fond of his own voice? Yeah, he's talking about his survival plan. Crowd's eating it up. Good elevator jazz. <sighs> Video game elevator. Jack, the security network just lit up. They know you're here. Oh, poor bastard, she's got time stutter. Oh, well. That didn't last long enough. All units, hostile situation underway. We need all units on high alert. Over. All units. Oh, right, the carbon rifle feels good. <laughs> Time to open the door. Look at those bullet trails and effects. Those look cool. Oh, gotta watch those things. They'll kill you, you know. Some 
reason none of these bullets are hitting. Ah, whatever, I have places to be. Oh, cancel that. Bubble, what way are we going? Whoop! Okay. Oh, oh, shit. Drone. Is there something in this room? My memory says that there was. Well, that's just my memory being wrong. Uh, nice little map of the place. Oh, love these indoor terrarium walls. Oh, oh. It's not a thing I can deal with. What about this? Nope. Okay. What the hell is this? Oh yeah, what is this? What is that? It's like I'm being drained. Chronon dampener, yes. I mean, the device drained my powers. Probably just stop you. As a chronon dampener. I know I had to say it like that, but okay. Lifeboat protocol. The day has come to commence phase three of our plan tonight. We'll be hosting a gala to celebrate the monumental achievement to which you were all invited. By now, you have likely heard of the events that took place earlier today at Riverport University. Our path forward has not been impacted by this minor setback. We are ready for what comes next. You are part of this journey has not yet begun, but. The onset of the fracture will bring with it new challenges that are worth reiterating. I am not able to go over many of these issues in detail at tonight's gala because many guests will not have knowledge of the lifeboat protocol. As such, I am including a high-level document outlining key points worth addressing. Number one, the path forward. When you were first chosen for the lifeboat protocol, you were sent a package illustrating a great deal, uh, great detail, illustrating in great detail. I feel like that should have commas, but maybe that's me being bad. Uh, several events that would come to pass. It was stressed that these events were unavoidable. Many of you were reluctant to believe this, but every single one of you uh, of those events... Sorry, my lost track of them. Uh, every single one of those events since, uh, since occurred, including the great, to our great regret, the onset of the fracture. This provides empirical evidence for my knowledge and understanding of the future, and I trust it has dispelled your doubts. No future event that I experienced can ever be prevented. This includes the end of time. It cannot be avoided. However, it can be survived. Survival of the end of time has been the primary mission of Monarch Solutions since its inception. Your loyalty to this cause will prove invaluable as we move forward. I know this isn't easy, but in the face of immutable facts, sacrifices must be made in the name of survival. From this point forward, we will have to start making those sacrifices at a rapid pace. While we do not know the exact date and time to which the complete end of time will occur, our knowledge about the escalation and stutters and time anomalies leading up to it is far less complete. We do, however, know that it will be dangerous. For the first time in 17 years, we are entering a phase of the relative unknown. Adjustments will need to be made along the way, both in response to the effects of the fracture's progress and to the less cosmic events that we will find ourselves in. We ask for your patience in these trying times. Number two, the lifeboat protocol. You are the chosen few who will survive the end of time. When time stops, your journey will continue to the safety of the lifeboat. The chronon particle harvesting operation is nearing completion. The lifeboat has been confirmed to be able to run solely on the chronon power as regulated by the chronon field regulator. Current data indicates that with th that the lifeboat remains uh, sustainable for approximately 50 years. Subjective years, of course, as no time at all will pass outside of the lifeboat. 
Given the preliminary research we have achieved using the CFR, we estimate that it will take at least two subjective decades for the lifeboat team to discover a permanent solution to the end of time. Given the nature of the problem, this is of course highly speculative, and the solution could prove to be more elusive than we're hoping. However, by the time the lifeboat protocol is activated, we are confident that we will be able to increase our chronon particle reserves and the sustainability to a point where we have a runtime of upwards of 200 subjective years. Or, to put it in another way, if there is a solution to the end of time, I am 100% confident that the lifeboat team will have the necessary time to discover it. Shifters! We briefed you on all... We briefed you all on the dangers of chronon disrupted wave function shit subjects, Jesus, or what we're now being referred to as shifters, we estimate that they will begin to emerge within stutters only as the end of time nears. The lifeboat was has been tested, and we can say with absolute certainty that the stutter-proof technology will protect the lifeboat from shifters. Using a living sample in Dr. Kim's lab, Dr. Kim, we have proven that shifters cannot manifest without the presence of the stutter. We will make sure that you are transported to the safety of the lifeboat before they arrive. Floor 3 of the lifeboat has been built to house the Monarch Solution Striker and Juggernaut Squads, a paramilitary force trained to combat shifters at the end of time. Their presence will likely not concern you. However, in the event that you travel outside the safety of the lifeboat proves to be necessary for any reason, the Striker team have been trained to navigate the end of time six to and successfully eliminate shifters. R and D tour. And detour. Tonight, we will be sending you VIP passes for the gala, which will permit you entry into a high-security R&D facility on Gull Island. Many of you, of course, are already intimately familiar with these areas, given your technological and scientific expertise, but those who aren't will undoubtedly find it interesting. You are welcome to join a tour to various uh, pieces of tech that Monarch has developed during Phase 2 to prepare for the, our journey forward. We welcome you to take this opportunity to, to see for yourself that every development necessary for the uh, see for yourself that every development necessary for the lifeboat protocol is completely on schedule. Your dedication to our cause will assure our survival. Dark times are coming, but you are the light at the end of the tunnel. You are humanity's salvation and hope. Together, we will survive. Paul Serene. So time monsters are coming. We've got that to look forward to. Shifters, he... Hang on, I gotta step out of that time bubble because that sound is gonna irritate me. Key attributes of shifters, theorized to exist in a state of quantum superposition, surrounded by a highly dangerous distortion field, highly resistant to injury, conventional weapons useless, populate the end of time, can only exist in zero state inside stutters, appears appearances likely once fractures progress. As a result, shifters cannot enter stutter-proof areas. Procedures. Keep your distance. If not aggressive, do not provoke. Avoid confrontation. Seek cover inside stutterproofing. Maintain stutterproofing at all costs. If forced to engage, assemble superior numbers with chronon tech weapons. No heroics. Well, these sound like bad news. I can't wait to meet them. I open these doors? It's very frustrating. Uh, that looks bad. Uh, is this the way I came? Yeah, this is the way I came. Whoops. I got turned around after a little bit of reading. Uh, boop. Okay, so we gotta get the doctor out ordered Hatch to kill me because he didn't want to put his plan at risk. But seeing the scale of that facility, I started realizing just how deep that plan went. It made me wonder. Time is ending. What was it all for? What was what all for? The alarm would trigger as soon as the stutter broke. I was on board with time. Can't go inside. Research facility. Oh, hi. A door being held open. 
Ah, no, it's this room. I remember this room. You done breaking reality? Never mind. Hi, Sage. How you doing? Oh, uh, by the way, everything, uh, the decision I had to make earlier, uh, I was told that it was on your behalf, so everything is your fault still. Can't wake up. It must be something in the, in the air today, because, yeah, I couldn't either. Time rush. What the fuck is happening? Fun. That was not what you were supposed to do, Jet. Things, Wait, what, what about, about her girl fucking? They weren't for you. Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> Which way is Amon's office? Fire pistol. <laughs> Jumpy. <sighs> Guessing this isn't the usual employee route. Husband, you are not clingy. You don't you don't cling to bits. No more than I do, at least. Okay, I forget. Can I just like time dash across these? Nope. That's what my problem was. So am I done breaking time? No, it's breaking more than ever. I am trying to kill all the people that's, that are trying to protect us from it. Also, I have a new flash dash. Oh my god. The platforming. I hate it. I, I remember that this one puzzle is very specifically obnoxious. I'll we'll stop it. No. They shot my brother or something. Dropped a building on his head. And for that, they must die. Oop. Jump. Oh! That one makes me a little angry. 
Is that my carbon? Oh, fuck that. I want my carbon. I'm being very careful because I feel like the, one of the times I did this on last previous playthroughs, that toolbox brained me and killed me, and I had to do the fight over again. Something weird like that happened. Okay, let's take our time here. Maybe this isn't the jump we're supposed to be making. Maybe I got a time thing I'm missing. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. This is it. And for some reason that time it worked. Great. Stutter proofing. Actual readable signs in the uh, in the world. One of my favorite things about HD video gaming. Not creepy at all. Why would it be creepy? I mean, time's just stopped forever. Monarch security team leads. It seems we are having an even busier day than we anticipated. Be aware that both Liam Burke and Jack Joyce are now being held in the detention center on the island. It should go without saying that Burke no longer has any authority within Monarch Solutions and should be treated as any other detainee. Both Burke and Joyce are considered exceptionally dangerous, and Joyce particularly so. He is chronon active and should be handled with caution. That said, Joyce has already has given himself up. It's possible that he has realized the futility of his position and the fight has simply gone out of him, but I'm not convinced he has no ulterior motives. Mr. Serene has to concentrate on a speech tonight. It's extremely important to the future of the company, so please ensure that everything goes smoothly. In the meantime, I will personally be conducting an interrogation of Joyce. Please expect my arrival at the detention facility shortly. That's Emerald's office. Yeah, Emerald had tried to warn Paul. The end of time was approaching quickly. Less than 24 hours away. Mr. Serene believed it would take years to run its course. Admittedly, he was wrong. Dream Journal 1, forwarded to Paul Serene. Sophia, as promised in our latest session, I am going to transcribe what I recall from my dreams. Still have doubts that this exercise will help alleviate my symptoms, but I'm willing to explore the idea further if you truly believe it has merit. For someone who is not a medical doctor, let alone a mental health professional, you seem to take a great interest in my thoughts, not that I don't appreciate it. Here is my at first attempt. I recall a haunting image of seven red doors. Each door had a wrought iron handle that was dripping liquid metal onto the floor, creating a pool in the middle of the room. I looked down into the aqueous metallic glow at my feet to see my own glimmering reflection, revealing that I had aged half a lifetime. Startled, I looked back up to discover that only one door remained. Jack Joyce stood in front of it. The heat in the room was overwhelming. Jack was sweating profusely, his skin red and peeling open. He begged me to take him back home, but there was no door leading home. I opened the only door left and entered, discovering that we were back in the same room we had just e exited. 
He refused to come to terms with this and opened the door again. I followed him, over and over, as he desperately opened the doors, forever leading us back to where we started. The heat grew and he howled in pain, begging to know why I made the other doors disappear, why there was only one path. He begged me to bring the other doors back. He begged me to take him home. The iron pool bursts into flames. Jack screamed in agony. I grabbed, grabbed him, told him that we needed to learn to endure the heat, to embrace the flame. I knew it was would come to pass eventually, but the only way to survive it was to accept its inevitability. My body began swaying rapidly, dancing to the movement of the flames around me until my bones faded out of existence and I surrendered to the fire until we were one and the same. I was no longer one being in one place in time. My life force spread evenly across the flames until I was no longer an individual in one body, but a grander, shifting entity. I could feel Jack being consumed within my essence. I felt a power within the heat, a clarity of intent. I forgot about my desire to ever return to from the flames, because the body that once desired to return was lost forever. I became the very thing I entered, and it became me, a cyclical fury chasing itself. Ouroboros. Ouroboros. <laughs> I woke up in a cold sweat. I quickly wrote down the words that poisoned my mind in the moment. Delmore Schwartz was right. Time is the fire. Time is the fire. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, there's a significance this holds in your life. Understand your concern that he is reluctant. However, it seems to hold pictures. I had a nightmare. Projected fracture progression. Uh, that chart right there in front of me, my face kind of gives you an idea. Uh, yellow was the original prediction. Red is the current prediction. And uh, that is a time graph. We've looked at the preliminary data on the frequency and severity of the stutters and crunched the numbers, and the results are alarming. Our original projection, which gave us years until the fracture reached the point where time breaks down completely, does not match up with the progression of stutters we are experiencing. But simply, the stutters are happening more and more frequently, clearly indicating that the Meyer-Joyce field is breaking down much faster than we thought. Taking the rate of acceleration, we can hypothesize that this might be as little as 24 hours uh, that we might have as low as 24 hours until we reach the end of time, or the point at which time stops and no longer starts up again. We do not know why the original projection was wrong, and why the data, which we do consider reliable, coming as it does from Mr. Serene, seems to entirely contradict our findings. Regardless, the main issue seems clear. In order to achieve Monarch Solutions stated goals, the lifeboat protocol must be activated ASAP. You thought you had weird dreams, Sage? Yeah. That there looks like what Beth wanted. Oh, shit. Emerald's at the party. The stutter won't last. I better find a way out of here and get to the party. Pronon Disrupted Wave Function Subjects, a.k.a. Shifters. Slide 1. Much of what we know about the shifters is theoretical, based on observations made by Mr. Serene and the limited experimentation we have been able to conduct on the only subject we have managed to capture. They do not seem to have a stable physical presence. Rather, the data we are gathering appears to be fragmented and contradictory, as if there were countless versions of the subject occupying the same space. Our current theory is that they somehow exist in a persistent state of quantum superposition, or to put it in another way with the reference with reference to the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. The full mechanics and implications of this exceed our current understanding, but on a practical level, it seems to make them highly resistant to injury. It appears that even if the shifter encounters deadly force, it may kill one of the aspects, but because it exists as multiple iterations of itself, including iterations that were not killed by the force, it doesn't stop. Current theory suggests that the only way to stop a shifter is to cause its wave function to collapse from the superposition to a single eigenstate. In practical terms, the shifter must be affected with deadly force enough times for it to run out of healthy versions of itself. As such, direct confrontation with a shifter should be the last resort. Slide 2. Contact with a shifter is extremely dangerous. 
We know that they are essentially mobile repositories of vast amounts of chronon particles, and that they can only exist in a zero state, an area which has been depleted of chronon particles, typically by a fault in the Meyer choice field that encompasses the universe. Colloquially, colloquially, we refer to them as stutters in time. We also know that the shifters are hostile to any source of chronon particles other than themselves within the stutters. So any chronon active individual within a stutter may find themselves targeted by shifters. It appears that movement in stutters by which we mean the very movement of particles within the space in which time flows, not merely the movement of an individual, disturbs them, and they respond with considerable aggression. As discussed previously, shifters are extremely resistant to damage. They, can, they are also quite physically formidable, but their biggest threat is the distortion field around them. The exact nature is unknown, but we know it warps the properties of the space surrounding them, exerting great physical stress and unpredictable forces on the surroundings. Again, in practical terms, close proximity to a shifter may be fatal, even if no physical actual contact takes place. Slide 3. The, uh, the stutter proofing technology Monarch Solutions has advanced offers solid, pro solid protection against shifters. Time flows normally within a stutterproof area, so shifters simply cannot exist within them. Therefore, as long as stutterproofing remains active, shifters are not a problem. However, stutterproofing of large outside areas is not feasible, given our chronon particle budget. So we have developed other technologies to defend against shifters. The chronon dampeners. A chronon dampener works by annihilating free-floating chronon particles within a specified area. As shifters' forms are hypersaturated with chronon particles, they cannot enter an area in which a chronon dampener is active without their wave function collapsing. Therefore, our operatives in the field have a solid, portable defense against shifters. Our own technology is shielded against the dampener's effects, so activities in stutters undertaken by our strikers and other operatives are not hindered. However, as an unfortunate side effect, the dampeners have a crippling effect on individuals who are chronon active without the aid of technology. Accordingly, should Mr. Serene be present, you should always make him aware of your intentions before activating a dampener. You, you may rest assured that the dampener is not powerful enough to do actual physical harm to Mr. Serene, whose symptoms consistently produce new chronon particles to replace the ones that are lost, but as the dampener's effects are unpleasant and enervating, such an encounter is likely to lead to an awkward conversation about future career prospects. Don't hit the boss hurt button. CFR briefing. No exaggeration to say the CFR, Chronon Field Regulator, is the heart of all Monarch's technological advances. Yada yada. Kind of going over more of the same. So, if you're wondering what uh, the end of time they keep talking about looks like, it's this. Forever. Time stuck, never restarting. All of us trapped in a permanent state of locked in time. This woman appears to be playing. Oh god. She's playing Alan Wake on her work computer. Good honor. Don't like hearing Children of the Elder Gods said in that way, but uh, that's just me, maybe. Nope, nope, get away from her. Quite expensive piece of tech you stole. Bill me. I knew Beth's cover wouldn't last long. I had to get it to her at the party before it was too late. That's what that is. There we go. Anything else interesting? What do we got here? Time Machine. I have been informed that the Time Machine core we obtained from the university has reached Monarch HQ safely and is currently being installed into the new Time Machine corridor we have constructed there. As you know, the core of the Time Machine is the Time Machine. The corridor around it is merely the user interface. That means, of course, that once the installation work is complete, we have effectively moved the Time Machine from the university into the Monarch HQ. 
That said, we don't intend to use it. Let me repeat that. There are no current plans to use the time machine. We are not sure how safe it would be for, to use given that the initial activation has caused the fracture. I personally believe that now that the core has been activated, further use would be safe, but make no mistake, this is a hypothesis, not a proven fact. We know that the machine taps into the Universal Meyer Joyce field, and somehow that connection has caused the fracture in the field, apparently causing because of misconfiguration. We are looking into the specifics, but until we know for sure, it would be irresponsible to use the machine. However, having it in place gives us a degree of control. It allows us an emergency to travel backwards, although we obviously can't go, can go no further than the time of its activation last night, or forward as might be required. Obviously, being fully secured in our building's restricted area on the top floor also means that nobody else can use the machine. I have re to reiterate that the only person who may authorize the use of the time machine is Paul Serene. I do not have the ability that authority. Martin Hatch does not have that authority. The only person who does is Mr. Serene. He takes this issue very seriously, and I strongly suggest you do the same. Caitlin, what you up to tonight? Here, this afternoon, I guess. Charlie Wincata Fiona Miller. What's up, girl? Uh, yeah, I don't want to read that. That's just heartbreaking. Renner's Mug. Check out Burke's contact. Who's he working with? Guns made to operate in a stutter. Paul had clear priorities. When time ends, guns don't. You're saying it awfully blase for someone who doesn't know what a uh, shifter is. Even though you just read about them. Act 3, Part 2, The Monarch Gala. Lifeboard Presentation. The lifeboat located under Monarch HQ. Access sealed until activated. Completely stutterproofed. Maintained with chronon particles sourced from the ground, ground zero. Particle flow directed by the CFR. Twofold purpose. Guaranteed survival of human race. Finds a way to restart time. Limited capacity. Personnel chosen based on vital skills. Complete discretion required. Notes. Mr. S will give the speech tonight at Gala. Groundwork for activation. Mr. H has limited availability. Busy with Joyce. Contact the, his assistant if urgent. Time Machine Core. Thank you for the update. We do not require the time machine to be activated in the near future, but from this point forward, I want technicians on standby. Our plan requires absolute control. That is what the machine represents. More than anything, we want to protect the machine from falling into the hands of our enemies. We have to deny them the opportunity to disrupt our plans. We may not be able to change the past, but if any travels have proven, if my travels have proven anything, it's that the past can help us better prepare for the steps to come. Those steps will be made clear to you very soon, Paul Serene. It's dead end. Looking your plan to Japan? Ooh. My plans also require control. Garage. They do. We'll be playing that next. Sounds like a way out of this place. There must be some kind of way out of here. Can't 
can't sing anymore or I'll get copyright strike. Yeah, I'm very jealous of her going to Japan. Uh, uh, stutter, be okay? Oh, Cronon Field. You little jerks, you activated it. to do was make it through the garage. Seems oh solid. god, this fight. What the fuck? Oh, 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 oh. Shit. Time run. Jack Joyce has escaped custody and is now Time punch. Joyce has a advance on target. Oh, God. Oh, Save me that cocktail, Weenie. I'll make my way there. Serene's finished his speech and he knows you're loose. He's headed your way. Remember what we said. I'll keep him occupied, but switch to the monarch frequency to make sure you stay out of his crosshairs. Okay. I'll see you at the party. Target! She's them in a fight ASAP. when I was trying to do like a hard move. Is moving in to intercept. This is Home Guard 5. Just by the tunnel system outside the party grounds. Stutters, you doing okay?
I could see the mansion where the gala was. I had to find a way to get there. I could see the energy field of another monarch chrono damper. It would drain my powers. I'd have to find a way to shut it off. Oh, the time stopping shit looks so cool. <gasps> Look, a drone. Uh. All right. See the mansion where the gala was. I had to find a way to get there. Oh, that wasn't it. Please clip that. Please clip that. I could see the mansion where the gala was. I had to find a way to said, get there. I love this game, but it is not without its stutters. I could see the energy field of another monarch chronon dampener. To drain my powers. I'd have to find a way to shut it off. My powers will work within that sphere. I better be careful. So I have to disable it to get my powers back. I'm just gonna assume it's that big red pulsy thing. Security's tight. Maybe you want to shut that machine off. For the party. What was your plan? I needed to get to Dr. Amaral before the stutter ended and Monarch found out I was coming. <laughs> For some reason, this is the thing I can't jump. biggest problem with this game is, is sort of Joyce's movements. A lot of it is just really clumsy in its execution. A lot of that got fixed in control. And looks to be even better in Alan Wake, so... Or Alan Wake 2, so... You know, now's, now's a great time. Let's uh, do it. Quantum Break 2. A la carte, catering. Beth should be here somewhere. Need to get to her before the stutter ends. Swoon text message. Serene just finished the speech. I can't take it. He's too much. I swear I could eat that guy up with a spoon. Why? <laughs> <laughs> 
Why did I read that? Mr. Serene's speech had been a success. The world was falling apart, but the wine and cheese crowd was enjoying their little goddamn soiree. Hey, you said it. Caitlin, I have a friend, another friend. Sorry, cutscene. But uh, I have another friend going to Japan at the end of the month. Is there anything you want me to ask them for you? Like information? What the? Easy, easy, easy. Hey. It's okay. It's me. Jesus. Look at all this. Oh, well, this is your style. Feel free to uh, send this to me on Discord. These people have no idea of you shooting at a possible amusement park. Yeah, well, Monarch does. I don't think my cover's gonna last. Yeah, well, I don't think it would do much good for the next part anyway. Okay, Dr. Amaral, somewhere inside the mansion. Let's go grab her. Better clock, we can be gone before anybody notices. Fiona's cocktail suit. Okay. Lead the way. We saw that in the episode. Wow, it's like we're on the set. What's our plan once we grab her? There's a boat I can't believe they right built the a whole island based on the okay, video game. Can make that work? Uh oh, I think I know what this is. <gasps> Screenplay part two. Oh yeah, stilted time segments are great. Game may be a little jank, but the visuals A plus absolutely. All right, here we go. Dramatic reading of part two of Bruce Livingstone's screenplay. Hey, Sophia, still haven't gotten any notes back from you on the first half of my screenplay, but I'm finished the second half now, so I'll send it your way. Let me know what you think. Time Knife, written by Bruce Livingstone, Act Two. Bruce has ju just had his best friend killed by his boss, Paul Marine. Bruce now has a time knife that sends things through time if he stabs them. He is going to Paul Marine's wedding now to tell his girlfriend, S Sophine, not to marry him because he's a really shitty guy. Interior Wedding Building Day It's a wedding. Paul Marine and his girlfriend, Sophine, are getting married. Sophine is real attractive. If most girls are ham sandwiches, then she's a 16-ounce steak. Bruce enters the wedding building. Bruce, stop! Safine. Bruce, I'm so happy you came. You can't marry Paul Marine. He's a real shitty guy. He's lying. I'm not. He killed my best friend with time bullets. But that's impossible. Time travel doesn't exist yet. That's what they want us to think. But I actually have a knife that is also a time machine and sends people through time when I stab them. I want you to believe you, but that doesn't make sense. I will prove it. Bruce grabs Safine's mom. Here's a bunch of money for lottery tickets. Bruce gives Safine's mom a bunch of money for lottery tickets. He stabs her with the time knife, but gently, not violently, so that she will travel through time. She disappears. Safine's mom enters the wedding building. She is now wearing different clothes. Safine's mom, he is right. He stabbed me gently with the time knife and I was sent to the past. He also gave me a bunch of money which I used to buy lottery tickets that I knew would win, and now I have a million dollars! You helped my mom become rich. Thank you, Bruce. You made me rich the first moment I saw you. Rich in my heart. With love. I always loved you most, but Paul Marine and I just got married. You're too late. Or, you're too late. Or is he, says the wedding minister. The minister pulls off his mask. He is actually George Washington! Bruce, I know you were getting married, so he's or Bruce knew you were getting married, so he stabbed himself and traveled to the past, then stabbed me so I would could be sent to this time. I then pretended to be a wedding minister for the ceremony, but I am actually not a minister at present. 
which means the marriage isn't official. You did all this for me? Yes, I stabbed George Washington because I love you. Also, the man you were about to marry wasn't actually Paul Marine. Paul Marine takes off his masks. It's Slabo, Bruce's best friend. This is actually a fake wedding. I saved Slabo's life and then had him disguise himself as your boyfriend to make this look real, but it was actually a test to see if it, we were meant to be. The only thing meant to be is your death! Sophie pulls out a gun. She pulls off her mask. It's the real Paul Marine! But how? Huh? I followed you into the past using my time bullets and discovered your plan to marry Sophie. So I already married Sophie in the past, but didn't she didn't want to, but I showed her this baby. Paul Marine reveals a baby. I told her that the baby was actually our baby from the future, and I used time bullets to travel with the baby back to the past to show her that we just had a family together in the future. But in reality, it is just a baby that I stole that isn't mine. Then whose baby is it? The real Sophine enters wearing futuristic pants and a shirt. Ours! Are you Sophine from the future? Yes! And are, you are very quick to understand things. I came to the past to tell you in the future, and I got married. Bruce, we had a very active and highly satisfying sex life, which led to the birth of our future child. Uruguay? This is the baby that Paul Marine is holding. He stole our baby. But why? But why? Paul Marine stole our baby and then traveled to the past so he could use the baby as a lie to trick younger me into marrying him, and instead by saying... In Instead, by saying that it was actually the baby that we would have in the future, me in the future. The past version of me believed him, and because of that I married Paul Marine instead, and no longer ever married you at all. Oh, man. It's over, Bruce. We're married. Until death do you part. Bruce pulls out the time knife. Paul Marine pulls out his gun with the time bullets inside. They have the best knife fight of any... The best fight of any movie ever. At the end, Bruce Paul... Bruce has Paul Marine with a knife to his neck. It's been a slice. Bruce lifts up the knife to cut Paul Marine. You won't get away that easy. Paul Marine aims the gun at himself and shoots himself 30 times. The clip is bigger than a regular pistol. Paul disappears. But then 30 Paul Marines enter. I shot myself 30 times so that I was sent to marry different... Oh my god so that I was sent to many different times at the same time, which meant there were 30 of me. Now that we are all here to kill you. Which means that each of you has a time bullet inside of you. Of course, but I made sure that we were all shot in the areas that have no vital organs, and we will get the bullets removed after we kill you. Unfortunately for you, I traveled to the past earlier and took your gun and added electric charge on each of the time bullets. I control the electric charges with this handheld detonator. No! Yes, it's quite shocking. Bruce presses the detonator. All 30 Paul Marines are electrified from the inside. Their skins peel open all over like sausages that are left in the barbecue for too long. That peel open all over. Then the Paul Marines all die. Consider this my resignation. Uruguay. Uku Gaga! Aww, yeah. God bless America. Bruce and Sophie make out. Sophie waits for a few seconds for the audience to stop applauding before saying her next line. Congratulations, you passed the test. What test? We were, we always believed you were the chosen one, so we traveled to the past to test you and make sure. We, we now believe you are ready to fight the ultimate villain from the future. Okay. Who is the ultimate villain? His name is Paul Marine. But I just killed Paul Marine. No. The Paul Marine you have known this whole time was actually been an actor from the future that we paid to play Paul Marine in the pat for the test. The actual Paul Marine is the is exactly the same, but he lives in the future. He was an actor, which means my job was fake as well. Yes, that is the only reason why you were kept in a low-level position for so many years without a single promotion, and it appeared that people didn't give you the respect that you clearly deserve. Because in reality, you are the chosen one. It all makes sense now. We must travel to the future. Are you ready? Looks like it's time to find out. Bruce puts on his shade. shades. George Washington waves the American flag. End of movie. Bruce Savage will return in Time Knife 2, The Reckoning.
catching up on chat, not the screenplay. How do you gently stab someone? What the fuck? Forgot Alan Wake, they should make this game. God yes, make it a cheap as hell visual novel. Like plumbers don't wear ties. I agree with all of this. Uh, Alan Wake 2 is a diversion from what really matters. Time knife. Shit! Drone! It's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Literally. It's about to kill the fuck out of someone. Jack, Dr. Amaral's in there. We need to get her out before time gets back. I'm trying, but the game won't let me. Possibly because you are slow. Come on, Beth. It's not like time is of the we literal wait. essence here. Let's go get Dr. Amaral. Beth. 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 Jack, get her moving before time kicks back in and that drone turns us into paste. Hey! Let's get to it, Doctor. <laughs> Uh oh. I should die. Where's the damn boat? It's right there. Go. Next to those bullets. Snippers. Oh, Beth and Sophia escape. We'll be sitting ducks here unless you get it open for us. I'll take care of it. Uh, uh, for me. Oh, Okay, that's not the guy I was named after, sure. That guy doesn't. I just shot him out of his head. Vision, tell me where to go. No, oh, fuck that. I can't put up my carbine. That okay, gate's still I? closed. Oh. What's working that? on it, Beth. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Hang tight. What about you? You're clear. Go. I can swing by go. and. No, just go. We went to all this trouble to grab her. Beth, I'm counting on you to keep her alive. Make my own way. Out. My plan was simple. There's a bridge to Don't the Don't get shot. 
fight my way through anything Mara could throw at me and then steal a car, drive it back to the swimming pool. Just remember, we need your ass alive for the next part. We'll see how it shakes out. An idiot. Heavy moving in. Time bomb. Okay. Stockpiling. We best send like Dr. Amaral clear. Mechanic. It's time for me to get gone. For that, I need wheels. Valley parking. Which means it's time for another junction. Sophia or Martin? This thing growing inside me. I've been fighting it for six hard years. Hard, throbbing years. Dr. Amaral was developing a cure for the Cronon Syndrome. She was the only one who could administer the treatments that kept my sickness at bay. Oh? And Jack had taken her away from me. Paul, you okay, buddy? How the fuck did this happen, Morton? How is it possible he managed to take her? Paul, is your illness talking? I'm on your side. Lied the lying liar. Easy, you They took her. Without Sophia, there's no chance of a cure. We did all we could. But there are forces within Monarch working against you, and I believe Burke was just the tip of the iceberg. It wasn't just Joyce that did this. Uh, sir? Uh, we've recovered Dr. Amaral's laptop. We have it set up over there if you want to take a look. I'll be right there. To go over her her time fears. laptop. If she's right, the fracture is escalating a lot faster than we anticipated. You know the future. Dr. Emerald doesn't. Is the lifeboat even in a viable state for activation? She's trying to convince you the schedule's wrong. Why? To get you to rush this? To make a mistake? The people opposing you. She could be one of them. She isn't. 
Are you willing to bet the entire plan on that? I implore you, hold off on activation, Paul. Let me clean house before this gets completely out of hand. How do you want to proceed? Somebody was working against me. Somebody close. Martin Hatch. Sophia Amaral. I could only trust one of them. Let's see what happens if we trust Amaral. Which sounds like one of my antidepressants. Immediately, so I have some information about Martin Hatch. Martin had been my closest advisor for years. I began to wonder if that had been a mistake. Sophia's loyal. She's always been loyal. I don't think we can trust her. The way she looked at the countermeasure like she's seen it before. She knows what it does. Sophia's research had saved my life. Loyalty doesn't run any deeper. And if we choose Hatch? Go fix the time machine. I said I'll try. Evidence was mounting against Sophia. I couldn't simply ignore it, despite everything we had been through. And she knew you'd never make it without those treatments. And then she took them away. If she turned against me with what she knew, the damage could be immeasurable. All right, chat. Who do we trust? Can we trust? I liked your last choice, so that's why I went with it. Oh Sophia's shit, I hit a button. Been good. I'll trust her judgment. We need to analyze these figures and make final preparations to activate the lifeboat. Well, we're protocol. choosing and Sophia. Once. Fine. I'll take the lifeboat to the science department. No, I think I'll do that myself. You're looking Let's a little timey-wimey. Sir? Put people on Mr. Hatch. I want constant eyes on him. Yes, sir. You got it. My apologies we for taking away your choice. From the security cameras. My controller fell. We've identified the way I grabbed it, I hit the back battle. She's Beth Wilder, one of our mid-level operatives. Her. Wilder and Serene. My God, she's been with us all along. She's working with Jack. Where is she now? Unknown. But we've got a kill team tracking her. No, 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 no. She can't be killed. Not yet. Find her. And whatever Mr. Hatch does, I want to know about it. Don't screw this up. Send it to me on my Microsoft Surface Pro. Beth Wilder. Oh it God, it is. She, I name, was. But she had been there. I can't be surprised. The right? When it all started. time working against me from the inside and she wasn't the only one 60% of the community agreed with our choice that makes this the first time we agreed on everything and now it's TV time previously on quantum breaks television show worry so much Back up slowly. Ah, my face! Ah, my neck! My lab. There's something in there that I need. The lifeboat protocol. Paul's a very dangerous man, and things will only get worse if he continues unchecked. What is it that you're so threatened by, Martin? Do I Your sexual prowess. Dr. Amaral's report. The stutters, they're they're increasing in frequency. What is that? A chronon disrupted life form. Extremely hostile. 
It's Dr. Kim. Let's go! Let's go! No, 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 no! Put one of those on! Games, I can get up and uh, grab a drink. Yeah. Is it already almost three? Jesus. Time flies when it's falling apart. Ah. Don't do that. I hate that. You and your time eyes. Simulator. Okay, now my breathing is coming through on the mic. Yeah, okay, shut up. Sorry. I don't, know. I don't even know what the light bulb It's just windy. Is. Yeah, I'm sitting down now. It's a sanctuary designed to shelter a list of monarchs essential personnel to weather the storm until they can develop a solution. Boy, it's you're telling me everything. So that means it. Have fun at your I'm meeting, hon. Not under Paul Serene's lead, you wouldn't. He's failed to see the value in his own people. Too consumed with grand ideals and delusions. You know what I find to be the most terrifying notion of this planet? Carnies. The idea of God. Oh, Simply that too. Idea. A being with that much power. The ability to take and give so freely. That kind of control. That <gasps> but should be feared. He said it. Not worshipped. Yet, people believe in it. Just as people believe in Paul Selene. You see, what's so scary about God isn't his control, but rather, if he ever lost it, Paul Serene's become unhinged, Charlie. He's triggered a catastrophe. He has the chance to fix it, but he's choosing not to. He's choosing to let things end. In the end of time. And this is where we come in. We? We risk too much leaving the keys to the kingdom in one man's hands. We, we should all have a key. There's something called the CFR. It's a crucial key to our survival and must remain safe. But as long as Paul is the only one with access to it, it isn't. With access to the CFR, I would take over. Get Monarch back on track, and once I do, restructuring would be in order, Charlie. Restructuring that would see you as my right hand. I'd be on the list. Absolutely. Yes, that's what I was implying. Then I need to go back to Monarch. And that sort of privilege isolation it can only be done from the inside. This costs more than you made last year. Please enjoy it. Oh, that's terrible. Why do people pay money for this? Put <laughs> the island on lockdown, but the pump house. Best acting in this show. Supply tunnel that runs beneath the bay. No one 
knows about it. We'll go and see him. Time is of the essence, Charlie. You better get to it. And uh, I'm just gonna have me the rest of this. Head to the perimeter lab. We're moving forward. Monarch Solutions, a totally real building. Unpredictable, but they're persistent. Erratic, but persistent. I need certainty. If I initiate the protocol, there's no going back. Mr. Serene, something like this. There is no certainty. We've never dealt with it before. How long? We've been running Dr. Amaral's simulations. It's hard to say without her to confirm, but... Just give me a time. The Joyce Phil could collapse within eight hours. Mr. Surrey, Boy, that's not a lot of time. Now would be the time to decide. Nope, oh, he's gone, Dalek. <laughs> Surface Pro. This time stutter brought to you by Surface Pro. Time's ending, just like you said. And the lifeboat protocol, it's a place. They built it to protect people from the fracture. And the only problem is, is that there's a list and anyone who's not on it is pretty much fucked. But if we make it back to the mainland, I, I can get us on the list. All of this entire island is on lockdown. How are we gonna do that, Charlie? There's a tunnel. All right, if you are lying to me this time, I swear to God. No, get off! Tired as shit. I don't know why you're doing this, but I don't have to put your name on shit, motherfucker. Ah, uh, third trip! What'd you do to him? He's fine. I'm gonna tell you why you're gonna put me on that list. I got a pregnant wife at home, and she's the only thing that I am thinking about right now. So if you get in the way of me protecting her, I swear to fucking God, next time, you will not catch your breath. Lead the way. God, this was already seven years ago. That's so weird. Tunnel. Aiden Gillen, that's the guy that plays Paul Serene. Break is even listed as a TV series and as a game. So, he said, Five minutes out, Mr. Hatch. What is that? Not sure. He's playing when we came in. Into the darkest dungeon, located in the soft depth of the. Did I do that? Am I the reason someone's Dungeons and Dragons audio is playing? My bad. 
Hey, Dr. Kim. I've come to free you, my friend. This imprisonment. It's unsettling. It's time for you to rejoin the others. To return to the infinite. symbol above that was two triangles touching at the points. That is not on purpose, or on accident. That right there. I've seen that symbol in the trailer for Alan Wake 2. Curious. Oops! I blew it up. Your wife. Three months. Congratulations. What you should maybe be doing right now is, uh... Liam? I'm going to blame the flood taking for so long on time shenanigans, because otherwise that is very stupid. It would not have gotten that close. <laughs> Are you doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. When do you get... Get on the fucking ground! Hey, ground! No, 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 we're with Monarch! What don't you hey, understand? No, get on the ground! Hey, no, no, no. Hey, I'm the one that called it in. I'm Hatch's guy. One guy. Yeah. Where's she? She's a scientist. She's important. We have to get her back to Monarch right away. Liam's Please. fucking dead. Get the fuck out of here. Now! Yeah. Gibson. I got her. Fiona. Fiona. If he knows he got Burke, why would he just trust the other two? Hey! That's weird. I didn't know that they were gonna kill him. What was I supposed to do? Huh? You let me on and then you kidnapped me. about you, Charlie! Are you stealing this car? Just get the fuck out of here. No, you're gonna need me. I got what I needed out of you. Yeah, I'm getting used to it. Why don't you open your eyes? The world is about to end. I'm trying to do something. Yeah, you're a real hero. Fuck you. So the lady that played Amy Ferrero back in the first part of the game, she, she's been a little busy. She's been some stuff. That's cool. She's Elizabeth Cardwell in Starfield. Sophie Jex. A nurse, huh? I'll see you there. Gross. Fuck. I'm really gonna enjoy killing your wife. 
Yeah, you didn't need to be like that. I mean, that's just a waste of bullets, but you're mad. I get it. Commander Davis. Davis and his team. They're all good men. Monarch's finest. Time ghosts. Paul, what about my treatments? I'm afraid so. You know what this means. You don't know for sure. I'm a dead man! You let this happen! Jack, he wants me to become him. He wants me to suffer until the end. Joyce and Wilder. But what was troubling me is who got them into Kim's lab. She paid a visit while she was thought to be missing, minutes before the explosion. Paul. Paul, what? I've seen this hallway. Paul, would you listen to me? Look, it's time you see. This was in French. Is. This was a part of gift. They forced her. She's trying to destroy you. She's Paul. trying to help I'm me. I'm fairly Jesus. positive. Look at you. The smartest man I know. Blinded by a fool's love. Oh, what are you planning on? Sophia's loyal. She's gotten inside your head. She's always been loyal. You need to think about if this. If the fracture's happening now, I owe this to her. Lifeboat protocol. Fucking Jack. Dog barking. Can dogs sense the impending apocalypse? You think? They sense the end of time itself? Riverport Hospital. Thank you. Well, tonight marks a momentous occasion for years. 
leaked footage. Liam? Hey, pal. I'm glad you could make it. I was just telling your girl here how concerned about you we've been. Emily. We need to go. Go? What's the rush? Uh, rising no. tension. Let's go. This is a hospital, you fucking man. I need 50 cc's of keyboard to the face. Everybody stay back. Let him fight. They gotta get through this. They gotta get through this. They gotta work out their issues. They'll be better friends for it. How many quick cuts that scared nurse actress? Yeah. Can't do the time warp again. Oh, the adrenaline's wearing off. Everything hurts. Uh, so, not a counselor. I'm gonna give me the keys. Or whatever the hell it was he said his job was. Emily, listen! Listen! Please, please! please. This is not who I am! This is not... I'm telling you, I never felt good doing this. I, I never... I never felt good doing this. But it's the only thing I knew how to do. And when I got back, I couldn't, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything to do. And Monarch, they found that useful, and they put me to work. That squared, makes it uh, okay. I couldn't, I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand being alone. It's, so every Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I would, I would walk down the street because it was the only two nights that the bartender, she wasn't at school. And I told myself every night to ask you what. It took me. A Fucking shit. If Mom, I could, if they gave me structure, you gave me purpose. I did this to protect you. I did this to protect us, our family. I did this to protect our family. Emily, you have to listen to me. Something terrible is coming, and I will explain to you on the way. But we have to move. We have to move right now. Q waterfall. If you will just let me, if you will just let me protect you on my side. Can't believe you made me run with this bullet in me. Please. I feel like we're even. This is me. It's me. It's me. We have to go. We have to go. Okay. This is the back of my head. Isn't it dramatic? That's weird. He never sees the future. Yeah, it's Pierce. I'm at the perimeter lab. So I have some information about Martin Hatch. I want him apprehended. Immediately. Weren't you supposed to be keeping, like, non-stop tabs on him?
End of episode three. Continue. Oh, the controller went to sleep. Quantum break. The secret history you of took time the travel. One thing Mr. Serene needed to survive, Doctor Amaral. That made you priority one. Yeah, they made that clear. Monarch lined every escape route with barricades, roadblocks. I had to get to the mainland, but I couldn't do it by car. Needed a new plan. All right, let's go. Beth, I think I'm gonna need a ride. The streets are too hot. All right, where do you want me? I'll let you know as soon as I find some higher ground and get a good look at the situation on the bridge. I think it might be a no-go. Be a lot better when you get me on that boat. Monarch's right on my ass. I'm not exactly making friends out here. How's Dr. Amaral? Still kicking and screaming. How long do you need to get here? That depends. Let me check. Paul. What the actual fuck? Is that Paul? It doesn't. Better get inside before the chopper spots me. Does it quite look like Paul to me? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I guess there's something evil inside him. I wonder what it could be. What could it be? What could it be? Yeah, just looking for a Hey, we use that animation again. Oh, what's this? A television? Sure look like so, doorways. We don't know where he is. We can't, uh, we can't find him. So we need to look into a, you know, a, uh, a replacement. Oh, they can't find the narrator for Night Springs. All ponies are made of butter in Night Springs. Ah! Kratzu things happening in Gid of Nigat Springs. Thank you. All ponies are made of butter in Night Springs. We know the old dance, the for um, fortunate and the destitute. The haves and the haves, have nots. Those who dine at the table and those who starve in the street. But the tables can be over. Uh, to, uh, but the tables can be turned. The gluttonous consumer may find himself the consumable resource. Do that again. And yet, that is the fate that awaits you in Night Fringe. It's Night Springs. Night Cringe. Springs. Night spring fright wind <laughs> Jesus We know the old dance the fortunate and the destitute the haves and the have nots those who dine at the table and those who starve in the street but the tables can be turned the gluttonous consumer may find himself the consumable resource in night springs I mean honestly like to voice act to that poorly is very right skillful. Things. <laughs> right things. That's it. Just had to throw a little Night Springs joke in there for some reason. We still have no visual on Joyce or Wilder. Doing another sweep. Yeah, 
about that. Bad news? Reoccurring theme of the night. I don't care. I'm looking at the bridge right now. If we let Joyce across that bridge, we're pixels. Weirdly, I can hear everyone talking about that. See, there's a pier under the bridge. You should be able to meet me there with the boat. Giant gas sign out front. Can't miss it. It's nice and bright for Monarch to see. There's not a lot of options. Switching to Monarch frequencies. Be in touch soon. Right, I'll be there in a few minutes. Don't stand me up. Okay, how are we getting down there? Where's the fire pole? Oh! This is the crazy nightmare state we created. Let her go! Some asshole from Lucky Joe's won't let us search his truck. You heard Serene. We take the hard line. Easy on the trigger finger, but if it comes to it... Copy. We have a conversation about what happened to Amy Ferrero. Yeah, let's talk about how you made her quiet. Huh? Let's talk about that. You have to <sighs> Time to jump. Superman punch. Whoa. Gotta get to that. Put the carbine back up. I have my carbine. Oh, I don't have any ammo. Ah. Ah. Oh. Tactical SMG. Need to get up to the bridge. We've got civvies trying to push through the line. You know your orders. Hard line. Any means necessary. Caitlin gave her orders. We take a hard line approach. What's funny, that scene where the guy points you out by screaming, like, hey, buddy, don't come up here. If, uh, if you pick the other route, uh, and the people are kind of following Monarch's lies, uh, you just straight up get, like, called out. Like, hey, it's that Jack Joyce guy! Oh. 
That does not appear to be control being maintained. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, people are dead. Oh, that's a Molotov. I'll take that. Thank you for the regular pistol, because that heavy pistol is not cool. Uh oh. Oh. Go. Ah, oh, that's right, he rips the cord out of the backpack, so they get stuck. I love that. Run and punch! Alright, now for the big boy. <sighs> Blow up the car. Oh, uh, these are unskippable, aren't they? I no, okay, they're not. No, 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 no. Time punch, time storm, time shoot him with a gun. Took care of them a little easier that time. What if we time bomb? Uh, oh, right, I have to walk up behind them. Completely forgot how to fight these things. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Need that permanent charge track up, please. Ah, God, he punched me with his car flipping hand. There we go, get the hang of this again. Okay. Okay, good. That's cool. Just gotta make it across this damn bridge and I'll be clear. Can I get his gun? No? Okay. Oh, weird thing about getting across this bridge is, uh, it's open. So much ladder! This bridge is clearly closed. What is happening? Oh no, time's being rewritten. This is so bad. 
Yeah, a lot of people are about to die. I knew I'd be dead if a stutter collapsed while I was in the frozen crash. I had to reach solid ground in the deck of the cargo ship was my best bet. Just had to find a way down. Yeah. Action dodge! So cool. Damn it. Oh, these are like a new? Oh, and I got hit by a time car. I knew I'd be dead if the stutter collapsed. Well, I, I really need to start crash. back up here. Was that completely I had necessary? I reached solid ground, and the deck of the cargo ship was my best bet. I just had oh. to find a way down. Yep. Yep. I didn't hit the jump button. That was entirely my fault. I knew I'd be dead if the stutter collapsed while I was in the frozen crash. I had to reach solid ground, and the deck of the cargo ship was my best bet. I just had to find a way down. Mm. Can't see where to jump. Okay. Good. What? Yeah. The frozen crash was a mess. Somehow, I had to find my way across. Hopefully That's right. Really cool level design. Riding on the back of this exploding semi. God, this game is so fucking cool. It's a bummer when things don't work quite right, but... Uh, time vision. Where, where am I going here, buddy? Oh, here we go. I kept heading downwards, towards the cargo ship. Hey look, whoever's in that car lives. And then they're gonna die. getting scrambled, caught violently. This mm. Mm. that mm. that doesn't feel like that was my fault. <laughs> I mean, it probably was. It just doesn't feel like it was. That's all. I kept heading downwards, towards the cargo ship. Oh my god! I have to sit through this. Oh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Don't jump. Wasn't exactly user friendly. Can't return. Thank you. Don't jump. Is getting much worse. Timelines getting scrambled. Caught in violent loops off sync. Crashing into each other. This was what being the time would look like. Everything is broken. In chaos, frozen, and no one would know. And that right there is the most, maybe, horrifying part of this for me. We would be trapped in this time, and no one would know. We would be unaware that we have ceased to exist. Because we are trapped in a moment of time. And like, if it could be fixed, I mean, great, you know, in 60 years we'll all Fracture be back where we were, probably won't even remember Objects it was a thing. Out of time. Which is out another. Of order. Tire timelines overlapping. Terrible thing. And it was going to get worse. 
unless we could stop it. The part where you don't understand the power you're wielding. You need to hand this technology over to Monarch. I've prepared for what happens next. You say you're prepared, but no part of this plan of yours involves stopping it from happening. Even if I fix William's machine, what could you possibly hope to achieve? The end of time is coming. There's no way to- Hey! This isn't a debate. I just watched a ship fast forward through a fucking bridge. Time is running out, and the fracture's getting worse by the minute. And it cannot be stopped. Paul has been to the end of time. He's witnessed it firsthand. Can't you see? We prepared for what's next out of necessity. Your research is based on work by William Joyce. You respected him. He knew that the fracture would occur, but he also knew that it could be fixed. He thought it could be fixed. We'll build Beth. a way to stop the fracture. This. The countermeasure. We're traveling to the past to retrieve it. You can help us get there faster. Or you can agree to disagree. I'll have to run diagnostics on the machine. I can't promise anything before that. Nick, take Amaral to the machine. All right, Nick. Hey, Nick. Eye on her. You got it. Welcome to the team, Doc. Don't make me shoot you. Jack, before we head downstairs, we have to talk about something. Okay. Beth's 2010 plan. Beth charts the plans for the travel to 2010 to steal the countermeasure. Okay, what's up? It's about the plan. Amaral gets the machine working. We go back to yesterday and undo all of this. Listen, in the video Will left for me, he said the countermeasure was stolen from his workshop on July 4th, 2010. He also said I took it. Maybe I did, Jack. We have a time machine. You're saying we go to 2010. We steal it. If Will was right, that would mean it wouldn't be a change. We take the countermeasure, bring it to the present, fix the fracture, save the world. Okay. Explain to me why that's a better plan than just going back to yesterday and preventing all this from happening in the first place. Because I'm afraid that based on what I know about time travel, we can't change anything. The past has already happened. We can't change it. But my way, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my plan still feels simpler. Let's just get the machine working. Yes. Let's see how Dr. Amaral's doing with the time machine. Yeah. Sounds like a bit of chaos out there. Oh my god, I just realized Did this time machine anything? was built in a swimming pool. I'm not sure. It's always I'll water. Check. How's it look? It's a lake. It's an ocean. The problem is quite simple, really. The power relay is down. You'll need to find a way to reset it up. There, where the light is. I'll lower the ladder for you. What happened to the power relay? Power surge occurred at 7 a.m. this morning when the machine was activated. Okay, the console here's got two red lights, one green one. 
You'll have to reset the power to the two stations with the red lights before activating the relay. Both stations are located above the machine. Just follow the cables to the red lights. Above the machine. It's a perfect place for a reset switch, Will. Okay, the first red light is now green. Good. Don't fall into the black hole. You don't want to get spaghettitized. Goofy. Also, keep in mind this is the first game that uses this engine. Like, they get a lot hey, out Jack, of this engine. Come check this out. More than most games. Hey, shouldn't you be keeping an eye on Amaral? Yeah, but I figure what I'm doing is more important. Of course you do, Nick. Okay, what is all this? I dug through the area and I found everything I could on your bro. You gotta see this video I found, man. Check out the TV. And everything else I, I put on those tables over there. Okay, the date is... February 28th. Jesus, Will. William Joyce. 1999. After months First experiment. arduous work, my machine is finally ready for human testing. Ready is defined by me since ready is obviously a relative term when you're dealing with the deformation of the chronon field and recreating of black hole's mass density by tangent. Okay, in short summary, I built a time machine and it works. I'm gonna prove it. Or die. Okay. Just need to make some final preparations. When I enter the machine, I will travel the clockwise around the corridor. Okay. Something you taped over. Core is active. Chronon levels are stable. I'll travel clockwise around the corridor, exiting back into the same location in the near future. Oh. This clock is set to my watch. Now, when I exit the machine, there should be a significant difference in time between my watch and the clock in this room. Corridor is locked in place. Okay, setting the date to five minutes to the future for the first test. Now, admittedly, traveling to the past would be much more impressive, but I can travel backwards in time only as far as the first activation of the machine's core, which is... Well, now, okay, machine's ready, monitor is stable, what I'm about to do is going to change the very fabric of the radiation. There's supposed to be a table here. It's Will's journal. Everything's in here. All the secrets he kept from us. If he just told me about all of this, I could have... It's best not to think about that. He spent 11 years building that thing. Abandoned everything else, including me. Now I know why. 
just got back from the funeral. My parents are dead. It feels like I was just told about the crash an hour ago. It isn't real yet. Standing there, I was numb to it all, weighed down under some expectation to emote in a manner that suited the situation, as if I needed to cry to appease the crowd. Jack was always the younger brother copying me. In the graveyard, our roles were strangely reversed. Tears were running down my brother's face, and I was observing him like some alien desperately trying to learn to feel. Looking at the pain in his eyes, I wasn't thinking about my parents at all, only Jack. Death is supposed to bring the living closer together, but I've never felt more distant from somebody I cared for so dearly. It tears me up inside that I can't protect him from what he's been going through. I can't ease his pain. I don't have the social proficiency to wield my empathy into some well-articulated apology that will make him forget this. The irony is that the only cure for his pain is time. Time. Ever since February 28, 1999, the concept has been given new meaning. The experiment was meant to give hope, not take it away. What I was told that day haunt has haunted me ever since. The very notion of a fracture in time has overshadowed everything else, even this. I don't need to see the future to know that I will let him down. I can't be the parental figure that Jack has lost. I can't be the brother that he needs. It's Christmas. I can't even give him that. No one can. There's nothing I want more than to protect him, and there's only one way I know to do that with certainty. I will finish the countermeasure. I will make sure the dangers I was warned of that day never come to pass. I can't fix the past, but it's not too late for the future. That brings on a very specific uh, mechanic. The time machine can only go as far back as when the first time machine was activated. So no visiting dinosaurs, no visiting Napoleon or whatever. Uh, I try to forget that period. Oh my god. Please say there's a CD. Dude, I already got it in the stereo. My bleeding yes. clock with special guests, Check red it. tears of oh. forgotten romance. God damn it, you guys. Wow. You know, this song really speaks to me. Uh-huh. Pretty sure that's obviously the healing power Sam Lake on the right. I mean, it's not even that bad. I could totally bone to this. Uh. Thanks, Nick. Oh, hey, Beth. You've got to be kidding me. What is it? It's a giraffe. This is all my stuff from our family home. I kept everything. Hmm. Huh. Guess he thought you might come back. <laughs> my artsy rebel phase. Complete with a very rebellious how-to guide. I always wanted to try this, actually. Never had the time. Jack? You okay? Boy, that is painfully photoshopped. Yeah. What's the point of a time machine without seeing dinosaurs? Well, it means you can't fuck up and create alternate time ways. What's wrong? There's no time variance authority. That's my signature. You made this? I've never even been here before. That woman in the picture is you, isn't it? So... Jack, there's something you should know. 1999. I was eight years old, playing in my backyard, and a woman approached me, told me she was from the future. She gave me very specific details of events that would come to pass. She gave me this. Filled with dates, events, proof of it all. Jack, that woman... It was you. 
Everything I told myself would happen, did. Every detail, for better or worse, came to pass and couldn't be changed. Our fate is laid out before us, Jack. Everything that happened to get us here, every sacrifice that was made, they're all a part of this path. And they can't be changed or undone. Beth. When we step in that time machine, you will see for yourself. All right. If you're that sure about how all this works, we can try it your way. The notebook was full of dates, events that would come to pass, instructions. Her entire existence was formed out of those pages. Beth, I know that this encounter will be a lot to take in. After all, it's not every day you meet your future self. I tell you that you need to keep this all a secret, but I know you won't listen. You'll learn the lesson the hard way. The next few years won't be easy for you. Nobody you know is ever going to understand what you are going through. Those closest to you will try to change you, convince you that you are losing your mind. You are not. You are special. You have been chosen to do something amazing. Know that your struggles will all be worth it in the end because you still have a purpose. You are going to save the world. How do I know? I've been through this all before, and I'm going to prove it. Below you, you will find a list of events that will come to pass in the future. They cannot be changed or undone. It will take time for you to accept this, but eventually you will learn to use this knowledge to your advantage. You will be prepared for what is coming. She's going to send herself back to, like, Microsoft, or, uh, buy Apple stock. October 3rd, 2000. Derek Stevenson has been bullying you for months. On October 3rd, you will push him down the staircase at school. You'll do everything in your power to resist this, partly to avoid the consequences, partly to prove this book wrong. But the terrible things he will say in that moment will be too much for you to handle. He'll pretend to cry, claim that you gave him a concussion, and you'll take all the blame. You'll be transferred to another school. You'll hope things get better. They won't. It's going to be a difficult year. Whenever you feel helpless, just remember this book. You are special. You have a purpose that they don't. Hold on to that. And if it makes you feel better, 16 years from now, Derek will be working at a dollar store. He still lives with his mom. December 3rd, 2000. Mr. Hartsock from next door will pass away. February 3rd, 2001. The kids at school will steal your jacket. Your parents will claim that you're hiding it on purpose so they will buy you a new one. Look in the bin on the corner of 3rd and Main. You'll find something that will get you through the winter. You'll be teased for wearing it by Michelle. You'll fight back, but it will only make things worse. Eventually, when you are able to contain your anger, take her aside and say the following to her. I'm sorry about your mom. Then give her a hug. She will push you away. She will look incredibly confused and vulnerable. She will never tease you again. April 21st, 2001. Erica, your best friend, will break her arm. Having read this, you will do everything in your power to prevent this. The actions you take to avoid this from happening will only make it so. This is the first time you will truly witness that our fate, or your fate, is already determined. It cannot be changed. Erica will blame you for the incident. Try not to take this to heart. You will soon discover that she isn't the friend you thought she was. Stay strong. You will find people who respect you for who you are very soon. August 5th, 2001. You will take the night bus home. There will be only one other passenger on board, a scruffy-looking kid with a black eye. His name is Jack Joyce. Remember his face. He's going to become important down the line. September 11th, 2001. This is the one that will change you. An event will occur that will devastate the entire nation. An act of terrorism will cause the World Trade Centers to collapse. Thousands will die. I won't go for, into further details because the more you know, the more painful it will be come when you are unable to prevent it. And you will try to prevent it. You will fail. You will curse the book for not telling you more. You will curse yourself for not being able to stop it. It will take a long time to get over this, but eventually you will use this pain to fuel your path forward. You've now felt what it is to completely, uh, to be completely unprepared for what is coming. It won't happen again. Next time, you will be ready. 
This is the event that will finally make you believe. Any doubt you had will disappear. You're ready to take on this mission. So when, what is coming? October 8th, 2016. An experiment gone wrong will cause time to break down. This event will be referred to as a fracture in time. The onset of this event cannot be prevented, but the outcome must be. If the fracture is not stopped, then time itself will come to an end. Life on our planet will end. Saving the world wasn't an overstatement. It is your mission. You must stop the fracture. You can pull this off, but you need... Uh, but to do so, you need the following... S to follow some simple instructions. Learn who to trust. Short answer, nobody. The less people know about you, the safer you will be. From this point forward, your mission takes priority over every other aspect of your life. Do not start a relationship of any kind that you aren't willing to leave at a moment's notice. There is one exception to this rule. We'll get to that. Know your enemy. Monarch Solutions. They will try to prevent you from achieving your goal. Learn everything you can about them. You will know the best way to achieve this when the time is right. Monarch is run by a man named Paul Serene. You must never be seen by Paul Serene. If he discovers you, then you will risk failing your mission. Learn everything you can about him. Remain hidden, but keep in mind that the best place to hide is often in plain sight. Blend in. Change your appearance frequently. Hair color, clothing style, everything. Be cautious about drawing attention to yourself. Learn to blend in. Examine those around you. The way they move, speak, laugh, copy them. Become your surroundings. Train daily. There are a series of skills you will need to master to truly be prepared. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, Filipino Kali, and Jeet Kune Do. Weapons training, knives, pistols, shotguns, rifles, wilderness survival, compartmentalization, lip reading, face reading. The list is one that you will build as you go, and you will, in time you will understand what is necessary and what isn't. Don't rush yourself. Start with gymnastics. Study your target. Jack Choice. He is the one person who can help you in your mission. He is the exception to rule number one. You can trust him. Learn what you can about Jack. Study him from afar, but do not approach him directly. You aren't the only one watching him. On October 9, 2016, you will rescue Jack Joyce. From there, the next steps will reveal themselves. Be patient with him. He's stubborn, reckless, naive, but you can't do this without him. And he has his moments. He's much smarter than he seems at first. Don't mistake grief for stupidity. Study your objective. The countermeasure. This is, the device to, this is the device that was built to stop the fracture in time. This is your objective. Find the countermeasure and use it to stop the fracture. Achieve this and the world will be saved. The device was built by Jack's brother, Dr. William Joyce. Any attempt to contact William or find the countermeasure before the onset of the fracture will be in vain. Wait, Jack will show you the way. Retrieving the countermeasure will not be a simple task. It will involve great hardship and sacrifices. When the time comes that you are, you will be ready for this. When you first read this, it won't make much sense to you. Over time, you will believe every word, but you will feel underprepared. You will wish that I had told you everything. I promise you that what is written here is everything you will need in order to get where you need to be. I know this because I'm already there. Chin up, Toto. You're going to achieve some amazing things. You. That is my favorite document in this game, aside from the Time Knife screenplays, of course. Uh, the weight of that whole thing. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about. Okay, that's the... I need to go up some stairs. Looks climbable. I see. And, yep. Why the hell would your brother put maintenance controls way up there? Of course. Shit. I'm still getting used to that. Don't expect to. Green. 
don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Test it. We're doing this. I'll set the date into the console. July 4th, 2010. Are you ready? No. Are you? No. Okay. Let's go. Holy shit! This is actually happening! Keep an eye on Amaral while we're gone. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go with her. Hey, got I got some winning lottery numbers if you want while you're back there. We could go splitsies. <laughs> Maybe next time. This is it. There's no turning back. Hey, wait, wait! What did you do? That was the wrong door. You changed the date. Where is she? Where is she? I had no choice. I couldn't let you take the countermeasure. It would put our entire plan at risk. I already called Monarch from the terminal. They're on their way. It's over. Fuck! They're still whip her! We need the countermeasure to run the lifeboat. I'm gonna follow through with the plan, tie her up, and get as far away from here as you can. Yeah, I've got this. Don't worry. Kind of like you had it when she set the thing wrong? Now we get to go through. First journey back in time, 2010. This is where our notes get hazy. You know how it ended. Your goal when you arrived was to retrieve the countermeasure. But my goal had to wait. Because I wasn't alone. <gasps> I had friends?
Pew, 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 pew. Beth? It's me. Hey, 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 hey. What happened to you? This is it. There's no turning back. Jack? She went the side that's for traveling to the future. And she's not gonna like what she saw. Dr. Amaral sent me to the future. I fought for months trying to find a way to get back. I wasn't the only one. Set William's machine to 1999. The first oh, right. possible he got shot exit video. point. Don't shoot! Hey, don't hey, shoot! Hey, don't hey, shoot! It's okay. Hey, it's okay. Ah, it's okay. I'm on your side. Who are you? I'm Beth Wilder. There's some things you need to know. You're the reason you built the countermeasure, and you've been here ever since. Eleven years? Why? Why didn't you come back? We should get ready. We don't have much time. She had changed. And there was a weight in her eyes. She was hiding something. She always was. What exactly do you believe changed in Beth? She lost hope. Here I am, back in time. I've already lived once before. No idea how long I, I, I'll need to stay here. No idea what comes next. This isn't how it was supposed to go. This wasn't the plan. If I'm going to come to terms with that, then I'm going to need to write it all down. There's nobody to tell this to but myself, so... Hello, me again. This all started back in 2016. Jack and I kidnapped Dr. Amaral. We were supposed to use the time machine to travel back to 2010 and retrieve the countermeasure. I believe Dr. Amaral switched the date and <clears throat> at the last moment. I heard Jack calling out, but it was too late. I was already inside. There was nothing to do but keep moving forward, and when I exited the corridor, I arrived at one place I never thought possible. The end of time. My greatest fear was realized. I'm still trying to grasp what that means. My entire life has been devoted to stopping the fracture. What I saw, was it proof that it couldn't be stopped? I can't believe that. There's a logic to all of this, a meeting. I just haven't found it yet. I'm not ready to write down details of the end of time. Not yet. The essential part of the story is that I found a way back. Spent, I spent a long time there trying to fix William's machine, but someone beat me to it. He set a course to the earliest time the machine could operate, the first time the core was activated, February 28th, 1999. I followed him through. That's what I found William, still alive, much younger than I had ever seen him. I warned him about the fracture. I told him that he was the only one who could create a solution. He begged me not to tell him anything else about the future. He said he couldn't stand living like that, being constantly aware of what will come to pass. His every action just part of a preordained dance. I wanted to tell him none. Or I wanted to tell him more, but I know how he felt. William agreed to do what must be done. He agreed to build the countermeasure. This whole time it was me who set him on that path. He says the machine doesn't have the sufficient chronon capacity to return me to the future. He says a jump that far would be nearly impossible without a substantial scientific breakthrough. Apparently that hasn't happened yet. That's his way of saying I'm trapped in 1999. 
second time around. So here I am. July 19th, 1999. Time machine move equals success. I worked with Will to get the entire time machine moved. Had to make sure Serene wouldn't be able to use it to his advantage, so we moved it to the one place I knew it would be safe. Bradbury Swimming Pool. We'll spend a big chunk of research grant buying the property. It's the one place I know for sure that Monarch won't find us. After all, they still haven't or still weren't aware of it in 2016. That means this is my new home for the time being. Will refuses to build the countermeasure here. He says that it has to be done at his workshop. He chose the location to build the time machine for a reason. Something about abnormal chronon density, ab anomalies, whatever. Didn't seem to concern him that the very people he needed to hide from know about his workshop. Probably doesn't help that he won't let me tell him who those people actually are. Guy's almost as stubborn as his brother. Hi, Finn. Now that the move is complete and Will is on, uh, on his way, all I can do is wait. Not liking the idea of that. Keeping busy was the only thing that distracted me from the eer uh, eerie nature of being trapped here. Guess I should look on the bright side. Second chance at a having a killer Y2K party? Ugh, Y2K. September 5th, 1999. Little me. The almost surreal experience. Her eyes look so full of life. Looking at the clouds, invulnerable to the world around her. She looked full of life. She looked happy. It was me. I knew the day was coming. I knew that I had to go see her and set her on her mission so that she would eventually do what needed to be done. So that someday she would become, well, me. She was in the backyard. Bright red duffel coat playing. Simple pleasures. It's strange. I remember the small details so differently the first time around. When I was a child, that woman who came to me seemed like an angel, a limitless source of wisdom, gifting me with purpose. Now I was that woman, trembling, a lump in my stomach, nervous as hell. It didn't matter. I knew she was too young to get those thi uh, see those things on my face. I gave her the notebook. I told a small child to give up those simple pleasures to pursue a life that would bring nothing but pain and hardship. I promised her that it would all be worth it, that she would make a difference, that she would save the world. She believed me. January 1st, 2000. Epic Y2K party! Ate bagels with cream cheese and watched Buffy reruns in a drained swimming pool. Party on. Sounds like my kind of fucking Y2K. Ooh, you know what? I'm about to do for another Buffy rewatch, actually. 9-11. I tried to stop it a second time. I warned them, told them exactly what was going to happen. Nothing changed. I came to terms with that fact that n none of this could be changed as a child, but since then I've seen things that make me dis uh, desperate to prove myself wrong, desperate to believe that what I've seen cannot come to pass. I tried to stop the rise of Monarch. I tried to stop Paul Serene, both versions of him. Every action was negated by the force of a timeline that cannot be bent or broken. I've tried to stop tragedy as well. Jack's parents, Christmas, 1999. I knew what happened to them. This time I was there. Car crashed exactly as it was supposed to. My presence only led to it... Uh, led it to happen as it always did. I went to the funeral. I watched Jack cry. I watched Bill build a wall... Uh, what will build a wall around himself. I watched two brothers change forever in that moment, and I could do nothing about it. And now this. Fuck. He's 22nd, 2002. Monarch! They spotted me near William's workshop, barely got out of there alive. After all this time, Serena is still obsessed with finding me. He won't give up until he does. I have to be more careful in the future. May 22nd, 2003. The end of time. Been having recurring nightmares about what I saw. I've been dreading doing this, but it's time. I have to write it out. It's the only way to move past it. In 2016, I entered the time machine, intending to travel to 2010. That didn't happen. Dr. Emerald changed the date. When I exited the time machine, I arrived at the end of time. The fracture had run its course. Time had stopped altogether. Oops, excuse me. The entire world was frozen in one hanging moment. I was the only one still able to function. Or so I thought. Then the shifters came. 
can still hear them. Their sounds echo through my dreams. Their entire world was still, except me. They really don't like movement. I'd stepped out of the machine into the one thing I spent my entire life trying to prevent. The fracture was never fixed. I was living the, through the proof. The first hours were the hardest. I was living through a nightmare that I couldn't wake up from, surrounded by constant reminders that my mission would fail. Never able to stay in one place because the shifters were always searching, always hunting. I wasn't alone. I discovered the first evidence a few days in. I heard the shifters become agitated, but I was nowhere near them. They were following somebody else. Paul Serene. A younger Paul. Scared. Weak. Vulnerable. Wow. Vulnerable. He found me. Tried to convince me that we needed to work together. To help each other through. He found out very quickly that I wanted him dead. He had no training, no killer instinct, but he had those damn powers, and all I had was a chronon harness. At the end of the world, the only two people left, and we became sworn enemies. I can't be sure how long we spent there. I c it could have been months, could have been years. When time doesn't move, it feels like an eternity. Our grip in on reality slipped away, trapped in an endless loop of brutal survival. Though we were enemies, there was a strange bond formulated through that suffering. We shared an experience that no other human can has ever endured. Eventually, Paul managed to get to William's time machine warning, working. He was convinced that he needed to travel back to the earliest possible point in order to stop this off from happening. He had yet to learn that the past couldn't be changed. I followed him through the machine, but he escaped. He formed Monarch. He built an empire. I watched the birth of a monster. I can't escape that feeling that my actions helped shape what he became. Maybe I could, he, I could have guided him. Maybe if I tried to hunt him down and kill him at the end of time. Or if I hadn't. That can't be my part in all of this. There has to be more. I wake up in a cold sweat most nights. I hear the shifters coming, can almost feel their presence. Much of my experience at the end of time has become a blur in my memory. But there's one detail I can't shake. One detail that brings my entire mission into question. One detail that haunts me. 2021. February 3rd, 2005. Hobbies. Five years until the countermeasure will be complete. I spend most of my days training. I don't know what happens once the device is finished, but I'm. but being prepared is my specialty. I still wonder if Jack will follow the plan, if he'll emerge from that machine in 2010. Best not to think about it. I'm not giving up, but I can't let these thoughts consume me. I need to focus on the present, focus on what is in front of me. That's the mantra that keeps me going, just focus on the present. So I decided to take some hobbies, tried poetry, got depressed, dabbled with a guitar for a while, smashed it against the wall. Then I started experimenting with graffiti. Seems to be working out okay for me so far. It's fulfilling on a few different levels. Partly as a form of self-expression. Partly as a means of release. Partly just to fuck with people. What happens when Joe analyzes some graffiti on a wall one day, builds an interpretation in his head, and then three years later his depiction of the image comes true? Not sure, but it's fun to think about it. I can't change anything, but at least this gives me the illusion of some kind of power. That illusion is what keeps me holding on. Sometimes I leave anonymous notes in people's mailboxes, <laughs> telling them what will happen next week. I watch their reactions from afar. Voyeurism and graffiti, that's my life these days. Focus on the present. October 8th, 2007. Jack. I started watching him recently. I know Marnark is tracking him, so I keep my distance. I wasn't sure why I felt a need to follow him, to watch his life from the outside, but I think now I understand. I met Jack in the f wake of his brother's death, the onset of the fracture, worst day of both of our lives. He was broken, just that's the only Jack I ever knew. There's some kind of comfort in seeing him in happier times. I watched his band play a gig nearby, atrociously bad. Whiny emo music. Definitely a music movement I didn't need to live through a second time. But there was something pure about seeing him up there, letting it all out. He never had an easy life. 
it was nice to see that he found a way to release all that. He just looked happy. Made me forget everything else. The nightmare stopped for a while after that, so I kept following him. It gave me something else to focus on. I spent most of my days hiding who I am, what I know. I knew Jack for less than 24 hours, but he's the only person I've opened up to about everything. I, I told him the truth. He believed me. I wish I could thank him for that. I'm not sure what I'm going to tell him when he comes through the machine on July 4th, 2010. What will he think when he sees me? Eleven years will have passed. I look like I've aged three lifetimes since then, and for him it could only be a matter of minutes. What do I say? How... how uh, that I saw the end? That this might be all for nothing? I think the one who's... Be <clears throat> I was the one who believed without question that we would stop the fracture. The confidence has now been replaced with insecurity and weakness. I fear letting him see that. I fear letting him see th the doubt in my eyes. For years I felt invincible. Full of hope. I'm not that woman anymore. I'm scared. December 11th, 2007. Memory. Tonight I painted something in the university campus. It was only after I was finished that I took a step back to look at what to look at it that I realized I've been seen it before, about a decade ago. It remains something painted on a wall, but washed away. It was a jolt. Is all of this futile? Nothing sticks. Nothing has changed. All of it washed away by the river of time. Fucking time travel. July 9th, 2008. Will! Been in contact with Will every six months or so. Short exchanges just to get an update on his progress, building the countermeasure. He's still at least two years away from completion, but he's now confident that he knows how the countermeasure <sighs> Excuse me, who will work. He told me that the countermeasure will be able to reverse a fracture in time, but in order to do so, it must be activated early in the escalation of the fracture. Once the fracture re runs its course, once the end of time is reached, he believes the countermeasure will be rendered ineffective. I asked him what would happen if the end of time ever occurred. He said that it would mean the fracture was never stopped. It would mean that we failed. July 21st, 2008. Everything I have been doing has been for nothing. July 24th, 2010. Final entry. The day is here. Soon I will receive word that William has completed the countermeasure. I'm sure of it. I've come to accept that this doesn't mean that we su will succeed. I've come to accept that my mission was a lie, but I'm not giving up. Lie or not, I devoted my life to this cause. It gave me meaning. It's all I've ever known. Even if, even if I've seen the proof that it won't succeed, I'm not giving up. I will dedicate every ounce of my courage I have left to seeing this through. I'll retrieve the countermeasure. I'll keep it safe until 2016. I will do everything in my power to activate it when the time comes. I will fail. But I will fail knowing that I did everything in my power to save the world. For years I hoped that this would be the day when I would see Jack again. I've given up that hope. This mission started with me alone. That's how it will end. This will be my final entry. That's my second favorite entry. Bagels. Hey, looter. You were afraid you missed the whole stream? I mean, it's about to end. <laughs> so you didn't miss all of it, so fear's uh, re well rested. Uh, this seems like a good place to, to call it. <laughs> Sorry, looter. I appreciate you swinging by and saying hi. So how's Quantum Break hold up so far? Uh, really good. A lot of a uh, lot of clumsiness in the controls, which in some of the more puzzly platformy things can be a little frustrating. But um, the time powers are still super cool, and I would love to see uh, a Quantum Break two, where they have all this time to refine gameplay and and everything. And yeah, I'd love to see another one. I. It's, it's in the air. Uh, Microsoft just has to ask Remedy, and Remedy has to say okay. Um, I know they've said they're up for it. So, yeah, it's just a matter of 
getting it done, I guess. But, uh, con contr control. Yeah, so I will call it there. Swimming pool 2010. Hell yeah, we're at the pretty much the end here. There's only one more segment after this, I think. Um, I, w I almost want to finish it now, but I know there's a bit of beef uh, between now and then. Um, yeah, Will's swimming pool. Lifeboat protocol. Yeah, so there's one more full act. So, yeah, there's a bit too much to go through, uh, even remotely close. So, we'll have one more of these tomorrow. Uh, the final Quantum Break stream. And then we'll probably uh, start Control. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I'm damned excited to do that. Uh, not sure if I'll do it here on the couch or over on PC. Uh, I'm going to test, see how it runs on both of them, see what's going to work best. I don't want to get surprised again like I was with Quantum Break. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, uh, I appreciate everyone for, for stopping by, saying hi, and watching this later on demand or on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Um, but I think it's time to call it. Uh, no one I know is raiding, so we will just, uh, er, streaming, so we'll just end it here. No raid today. Um, yeah, one last thank you to everyone, uh, for joining me on this journey through a criminally underrated Graham, in my opinion. Um, a very cool game that, yeah, just... I think deserves a lot of attention. I think a lot of that is just nobody bought a fucking Xbox One because, boy, they screwed the pooch on that. But, uh, you know, that time has passed. And um, I think people should visit this game on Xbox. Do not play the PC version. It is so fucking busted. Holy shit! Is it busted. Quantum Break is such a cool idea for a piece of entertainment. Even if the TV show or game elements aren't as good as they could be, what an audacious thing. I mean, this game is an event. Like, uh, this game is like the first season of Lost to me. Um, it's an event. At least that's certainly what they wanted it to be. And I think they succeeded. There was just a lot of other out <clears throat> excuse me, outside factors. Uh, so much respect for Remedy just going for something different. Yeah, I mean, me too. Um, this... They, they re like, them and Microsoft really got together. They really wanted to make this, this prestige television show slash video game. They were trying to really merge these two mediums in an interesting way. Did it always work? No. Was it always great? No. It still remains incredibly fascinating. It it remains great in its own way. Like overall, I think it stands on its own. And yeah, like you said, it's it's clearly an experiment of a bold, expensive experiment. Hence all the fucking in-game like advertisements for Nissan and shit. They had to pay for it, and uh, Microsoft footed a lot of that bill. And you know, it had to be profitable. You know, at the end of the day, video games are a business, and Remedy is not afraid of looking at that business and trying to adapt, you know, whatever they can to do whatever it is they want to do. Um, you know, I don't think anything they've done is stupid. You know, the product placements for Alan Wake and for Quantum Break, um, I don't think they're bad. I, you know, they're they're no worse than any other television show you know fringe is one of my favorite television shows they were always hawking some fucking nissan leaf or something uh in the background like that's just television baby that's just money that's just how this shit gets made um and yeah audacious is such a good word for that looter it, it really really good word for for what they went with here I mean, the cast that they got, like, they were getting some prestige people. You know, this is 2016. Uh, Game of Thrones isn't bad yet, according to most people. I think, oh, it's always bad, but that's, I'm not getting into that. Uh, you know, uh, Lance Reddick, he was in the fucking wire, everybody. Like, they got him for this project. That couldn't have been easy. 
no joke, you've thought I should watch Fringe at least twice in the last week. Uh, let me be the third thought. Yes, you should watch Fringe. Do it now. Ooh, Halloween, October. Kind of a good good time for it. Nice spooky show. Uh, vibes like no other. That show is really damn good. Um, again, not always perfect, but overall, very incredible. One of my favorites to this day. Uh, you know, I'm about to do for a rewatch myself. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't recommend this game enough to people. If, if people care about video games, if they care about the medium of video games, I think this game needs to be looked at for what was right and what was wrong, you know, warts and all, but I just, I think this game is so incredibly important and interesting to look at and also it's a you know it's a product of its time 2016 like netflix was just getting into making all of its own shows uh i think stranger things would be in another what two years year or two um like all of this is it's like it's all in that same wheelhouse um I, don't know, I just I think it's I think it's so important. And when you look at control, you look at what they realized worked and didn't work between Quantum Break and Alan Wake, and they made a better game. And I think that shit's cool. And now with Alan Wake 2, we've got hopefully an even better game coming. And we wouldn't have gotten there without Quantum Break. We wouldn't have gotten here without them having the funding to make this engine that they use for their games now, the, the Northlight engine. But we simply wouldn't. So, anyway, that's my spiel, my ramble on Quantum Break, a game I love maybe too much. Um, but god, the time powers are so fun! It's so fun! Alright. With that, we'll go and call it. End of the stream. I uh, want to thank y'all for joining me. Love having you around. Love having you talk. Looter, feel free to reach out to me on Discord later. We'll uh, we'll talk about some more stuff if you want to. With that said, everybody, have a great week out there. I know it's only Monday, but uh, new week, new possibilities, new adventures. If our time is truly written, then we might as well enjoy it. Thank you. Have a good evening. And goodbye. Goodbye. Echoing for effect. Stopping live stream. <laughs>